to preface this, the reason I want to talk about this girl, she reminds me of a couple people in my life. They're very wonderful people. I adore them. I think they're in a similar category to her. And I think they even slightly look like her, which is interesting. Very educated, independent. I don't know this woman's background or anything about her, but her problem is related to the loneliness epidemic. And I think there's something to this that is very interesting to my brain. So I figured we could watch it. And again, I am not judging the consciousness that is this person. I am just talking about this category of person. And we're trying to see if we can learn something by observing her life and applying it to our own. We are never making fun of this person. We do not know her. But since she is sharing her life with us, we're going to use it to try to better our own. I've been single my entire life, my entire life. I'm gonna be turning 42 in August. And I've never had anybody love me or desire me or want to be with me. Um, and I have so much love that I feel like that is inside of me with nowhere to go because it can't transfer to friends or my family or my parents because. P.S. Um, I don't know if you want. Well, I guess I can say now I already see a red flag. So for me, when I watch videos like this. I see, I see two red flags so far. I don't know if you guys have noticed any yourself. I'll write mine down and I'll tell you at the end what it is. Because it's something separate, it's something different. And I've gathered all of this love since I was in high school. And then it just sits there and it eats me alive sometimes. And I'm bringing this up, oh my gosh. I just slammed my hand off of that. Uh, sorry, I'm bringing this up because I'm lonely and sad and the world is hard and horrible. And I was thinking this morning that like no one's laid next to me in bed. I've never had the comfort of someone's arms around me. Um, when I've had difficult moments, I've gotten through them by myself most of the time. Now I have a beautiful family of brothers and my mother and my dad when he was alive. And I love them and I'm grateful for them. But there's something different about having somebody that's there for you, next to you, with you. And it's a different kind of loneliness if you've been single all of your life. And I know that there are people who get this. There are people who follow me that get this. But I was thinking about it in terms of just bigger worldly issues as well. The fear of the world and the difficulties that we are seeing. And again, this is minuscule on the level of what some people are facing but it doesn't mean that it's nothing and I have to figure out how to deal with these feelings. But the idea that like I don't go home and, and somebody's there to talk with and cook dinner with and um, I have a roommate, but we do our own things. We have our own lives. And again, it's not the same. It's not the same. And I'm always told sometimes as a single person that um, it's not easier on the other side. And so I guess I just wanted to say to people, um, who get this feeling that you're not alone and I know that it's difficult but I also know that there's a certain type of strength that has been developed that I have because of my experiences in my life that has led me to be able to to do difficult things and it's difficult being alone um, and it's okay to feel lonely and it's okay for it to feel hard and scary um, so just know that you're not alone and know that I see you and I'm there with you and I'm still seeking to find ways to make it easier for myself. And I really, really do wish to make it easier for others. So if you're lonely, know that I'm sorry and know that I'm sitting in the lonely with you. I hope you have a good day, everybody. Uh, let's see. This is depression. That's unfortunate. Damn, this woman needs therapy. There's something different about having loving family too. Can't have it all. She's very afraid. Giving victim mindset. Gross incel vibes. Gross lol rude. The strength is a wall. I'm getting the vibe that she grew up very religious or repressed. Um, you guys are saying, let's see. Da -da -da, being alone is better than being with someone you can't stand. Um, Cass says, I like, get her, but it, she might need to pop that relationship cherry. Okay. So I saw this woman and I'm like, oh, she reminds me sort of of a couple of people I know in my life, though the people in my life that I know are very educated. They have their own life. They actually aren't too desperate to be with a person. They just haven't been or they haven't been with a person in a way that feels fulfilling because like maybe they've had a one relationship or two or maybe they've had no relationship. It just depends which person I'm thinking about. But 
Either way, the people in my life have, I think, for the most part, really moved past this narrative and they're on to the other narrative, which is like, I'm just gonna live my life and whatever happens, happens. Initially, when I saw her video, the first thing that gave me, for me, for Brittany, a huge red flag, so it's specific, is the whole like, I've got so much love to give. I'm like, it, red flag. I don't, personally, I've never heard that said in a way that doesn't sound either self self congratulatory or kind of icky in a way because it's like I have so much love to give and it's like cool give it to charity the fact that she has a loving family but that's not good enough um the fact that she's like I've had a lot of hard moments and I've had to do them alone what does that mean right because like the whole point to me of having a loving family is like you don't have to do things alone. But obviously there are just things you have to do alone because you're an adult. And then the question is what things are you doing alone that has anything to do with having a partner? You know, like going to the hospital. Like why would you need a partner to go to the hospital? You know, it's like, oh, I did this alone. It's like, um, did you expect to do to the hospital with somebody? Like don't you just take yourself to the hospital? And then it's, yeah, if you need friends or family to come, I'm sure you can call somebody. She said she had a loving family. But like why would you need a partner to go to the hospital? So it's like, okay, what what could she mean by that? I've had things that I've had to do alone. You mean like what? Like life? So then my brain's like, what does that mean? So then I'm trying to think like, okay, what is like what is this? Who what kind of person is this? So then look at this cute video of her and her mom. It's my birthday! And Woo! we're here for a fit check with mother. We're going to brunch. And it's also going to be the day that Taylor Swift announces 1989. I can feel it. Eight, nine. Okay, so she's a Swifty, which is like interesting. And then her mom is super adorable. Like she's really adorable. She's very pretty. She's got this cool gray hair. I love it. She's got a very specific build. She's a tall girl. She's like a stockier girl. So like, you know, that's an interesting pair up. I'm assuming she's straight. Um, a lot of my female friends that are kind of very much in her category are straight and kind of similarly in the same boat. About 40 single very similar in a lot of ways growing gray um they're taller they're stockier and they're really great people but they are single which own oh, their ace like either ace demi queer but mostly straight i will i'll admit some of them could be queer but some of them are ace or demi or straight you know it's interesting nine so thanks mom thank you <laughs> so i'm wearing um okay, american see. eagle jeans vans and my Taylor Swift merch. My brother had a friend get this on Glendale night one. Okay, mother. And I am wearing Covington pants, Dan Skins shoes. And take a look of my shirt. It what says. Say? I mean, the mom is cute. She's like very, you know, cute. I don't know, you know. Nobody helps me in this house. Who gave it to you? And it has a great meaning. For me and I, Mia gave it to me. I did, for Mother's she Day. She did, for Mother's Day. Hey, now we need to get Dad in on this fit check. Right, Mom? <laughs> Dad. Oh, wow, Dad's dead. But hold on, she's got a look to her that I think is very specific. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's like a very specific look. It's kind of an old lady look, and not just because her hair is gray, there's something about her that feels like an 80s home that hasn't been updated and it still has the same like wallpaper. And I'm not even mad about it. I think it's really endearing and cute, but nothing about her is modern. Even the way she likes Taylor Swift feels old. Does that make sense? And so she almost needs a guy who's kind of still old as well, but they're not old. They're just stuck in the 80s. There's something about her that feels like she's stuck in the 80s and I don't even know what it is. But she feels dusty, but not unpretty. I'm not saying she's ugly. I'm saying she just feels dusty, if that makes sense. Like she's, there's something about, I don't know what word to use. Not in a bad way either. Just like, I almost want to polish her off a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Dad, tell them what you're wearing. Speak up. They can't hear you. <laughs> Mia. <laughs> He's wearing the best fashion that 2018 Granite had to offer. Right, mom? Yeah, Case is out of place, kind of. Yeah, she's kind of out of place. And I don't know how to explain it. And I don't mean dusty in a bad way. I mean, I want to wipe her off and like put baby oil on her and kind of like she's she's 
she's she's kind of like i don't know like there's something about it. she seems so sweet though okay what else is he wearing show them go what show he's them wearing is the love of his family part of the love of his family <laughs> they made little stones with messages for him there we go and then in the back he's wearing more stones from the past see how they're funny they're both like light i like that they're like they're bringing their dad into it yeah yeah somebody said she feels like an old library book yeah she feels like an old library book and i just want to like dust off the cover for her you know what i mean and i'm i know like it's like not helping her but i wonder if it's not hindering like i don't want to make her someone she isn't because that's not what i'm trying to do but i'm like interesting are we sure it's not just the gray hair i don't know i feel like gray hair can look really great but it, her hair is beautiful i don't know if it's the gray hair i'm not convinced but it could be and it says the quote of the title Faster, of his Mom. favorite song the favorite hymn el alba sharon all right Hey, there you go. She's a tall girl and she does that tall girl thing that I hate where they like hunch their shoulders because they're afraid of being tall. Guys, it's not cute. Your hunchback is not cute. Stop doing it. I love you. Stop doing it. I hate all my tall friends. They do it and I hate it. Stop doing it. Just own that you're fucking tall. It's hot. Don't you want to squish someone with your mommy thighs? Men would be all over a tall queen that owned it. Own the tall queen. When you don't own it, you look like a troll. It's not cute. Nobody wants a troll. Not even the trolls. Okay? Stop doing it. I'm so sick of it. Stop hunching. It's not cute. Okay? Own the tallness. I knew a girl who was 6'5 and she wore high heels because she was like, fuck it. I'm going to wear high heels. And she looked fucking hot as shit. Never had a problem. You know? But I don't like it. I hate that aesthetic. But I love her aesthetic in general. But yeah, there's something about her that's too insecure. And I think insecurity scares people. Like um, a dog that's afraid. Happy oh. birthday! Happy birthday and happy Taylor announcing 1989. She's going to do it, Mom. Is she? She's going to do it. Bye! Okay, so she's like super sweet. There's nothing about her that's like off-putting. She's very interesting. But she has this aura around her that's very like confusing. And I don't know what it is. Like I'm not sure what it is. The internet is a wild place. So. It says, but her prime was 20, 2010 through 2010. I don't know. You are saying my prime was from the years 2000, 2010 on a post where I'm talking about being lonely and single. And yes, I know I'm open, opening up myself to this and people's opinions about my life when I share it on the internet. What that doesn't, so this doesn't bug me. What's interesting to me is that you don't know me at all. You have all of like potentially two and a half minutes of knowing who I am, and you have decided when my prime was and what was happening for me at that time just based on age, just based on I would have been younger 20 years ago. Now, I don't want to talk about what was happening in my life then, but let me just tell you that was not my prime. I don't even know what prime means, honestly. Ooh, I that's think that's probably your problem. <laughs> that's probably your problem is you don't know what a prime, like your, the prime, like your prime. Your prime is probably in your present if you're having like a good time of your life. Like my, I feel like I'm in my prime because I'm having the best time in my life. I'll always feel like I'm in my prime if I'm having the best time of my life. My parents feel like they're in their prime because they're 65 and in the best time of their life. So when she says, I don't even know what the prime time would be. I think with age, I've gained experience. I've gained um, an ability to understand myself better and to love myself more. I'm still on that journey of how. Now, does she feel autistic? I think she feels asexual. So maybe one of the dilemmas she's running into is like, is there an asexual problem going on where she doesn't know she is? Is she from a generation that doesn't use that language? Does she not know that's an option for her to identify that way? Now, I could be wrong, but she doesn't She doesn't have any sexual aura to her. And I'm wondering if that's it. How to do that. But definitely those years of 2000 to 210 were not my prime so again nobody needs to go after this person i'm not upset this comment is i don't even know why she made this video 
hurting me. I highlight it because I think there are people who would feel upset or would feel hurt by that um, or struggle with the idea that um, age takes away their goodness or age takes away their prime, whatever that may be. But I think with age, you gain quite a bit. And the main thing I just want to put across mm -hmm. is that like, you don't need to let people's opinions of you matter as much as they do sometimes, especially people who don't know you. People are going to say stuff. They will say stuff and you can't stop that, but you don't need to let that stuff enter because um, they don't have all the information. And so maybe sometimes before you comment in the future, think about the lack of information that you have. Yeah, I don't know why she she says that exactly. Let's go back to the original comment. I and there, there's like comments here that are interesting enough that I kind of want to go over them with you. I'll switch you guys over. Okay. Um, it says I'm 21 and I've never been in a relationship. I may be, uh, half your age, but I understand I have so much love to give that I can't go to friends or family. I would love someone and to be loved. I don't trust this. Like I have so much love to give. I don't believe you. I think you, I don't understand. Could someone explain that? You know what I mean? Could somebody explain what does that mean when people say that that's not toxic? Because I only know that in a toxic way. I have so much love to give. It's like, mm, then learn to give it to people. People have so much love to give, give it to people. I don't know what that means, right? Ingrid says, do I have sexual uh, sexual aura? Yes. Ingrid, you're dripping, whore. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, you don't come off asexual to me at all. Um, You know what I mean? Does anyone have any insight there? Because I just, I don't understand that. Like, I feel like if I got love to give, I'll give it to somebody who wants it. I'll be 38 next month. A comment says, I've never experienced romantic love. I'm so appreciative for of you for sharing your experience, letting others like me know we're not alone. That idea is interesting too, because I do think this is common. I think there's a category of the population that's really sweet and really well-intentioned, but they're a little fucking dusty. And something about their dust... The, like like an old VG, VHS tape that like hasn't been, you know, taken off the blockbuster shelf, but it's still a great movie. It's like, well, people don't want to check out the movie because something about the box is just dusty. That's what it feels like. It feels like this movie is so great. I just wish people would enjoy the movie, but they can't get past the box. But I'm not even sure what it is about her that's making me feel this way. But it makes me think like, I don't know if it's her insecurity or her like, I have love to give I don't know what it is, but it makes me like want to walk away from her too. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. you know what I mean? I'm not sure what it is though. Like I've never had a romantic relationship since I was 38. Like her, I, I'm almost 38. Like, what is that like? What does that mean? What does that mean? I've never been in a romantic relationship and I'm 38 years old. Like never in high school. You never asked anybody out. Now, Somebody said, I wonder where it is. Somebody said something like, uh, okay, this one. A lot of people are saying, oh, but uh, being in a relationship, you can still be lonely. Don't get it. You are still chosen at some point. You were still chosen, still wanted at least once. It's not the same. So then I've heard this feedback from some of my friends where they're like, Brittany, you don't get it. You've always been picked by people. And I'm like, um, yeah, but I also like am very open with it. Like I'm, I really put myself out there. I'm not even exaggerating. Like I put myself so fucking out there that it would be, a, 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 there's just no doubt in people's heads that I'm into them. I literally point to them and go, I'm really into you. So if you want to do something about that. Now I'll tell you, sometimes my friend and I will be at the store and I'll be like on, you know, we'll be on our phones or something and then I'll get off my phone and I'll just sit shoulders up and I'll look around and I'll wait to make eye contact with somebody and then I'll be like, And that person will come over and we'll start talking. And it's like, that could be your husband or wife. Like, why aren't you talking to people? And the friends I know who are like desperately lonely for relationships, they always refuse to talk to people. They're always so closed off. They don't want to be the first one to make the move. They want to be chased and they want to be chased past their no. So I find that the same friends that are asked out but say no to these men want to be asked again and again and again, kind of, or they want to vibe right away. It's very confusing. Versus I'm just like very blunt. Like I just whoop, 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 whoop. You know what I mean? And maybe look, maybe that's that autistic riz, you know. <laughs> maybe I got that autistic riz. But it's kind of one of those things where that's just how it works for me. 
Or like if you go back and check the DMs between my partner and I, I just like I slide in with gifts, like little anime gifts, and I'm like. You know what I mean? It's just like, but it only works because I'm not embarrassed. It only works because I'm like, hey, I'm into you. It only works because I'm allosexual. It only works because I'm the kind of person that just like, I I know I want to meet somebody and I want to know if you're my next person. But if you're closed off, if you are sending signals, no, if people ask you out and you still say no, okay, but then it's like, even if they say yes, you still have to match with the love of your life which is a very big rarity. So I knew every person I was with, I was like, I'm going to have fun, go on a first date, see if we like it. No, that's not the person. That's not the person. It also depends on your dating history. Are you a person who just wants to hold hands with a boy? Are you a person that wants to get married to this girl? Or, you know, like what part of the relationship are you even in? If you tell me I'm 40 and I've never been in a relationship, but you're like educated, you're active, you have hobbies, then you're definitely doing the rejecting to some extent, or you are not acknowledging that you are looking for something specific. Now, my theory is these people are actually looking for something specific, which is beautiful. And instead of realizing like it's not a matter of finding it, it's a matter of knowing that it is specific, they think something is missing from their lives if they don't find it. And I think that's probably going to be the problem, right? Okay, it says no amount of self-love or friendship love or any other type of love can make up for the lack of romantic love. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I just don't know what that means. You know what I mean? I'm just not sure of what that means, right? Lily says you can show interest and still be and still be chased. I don't understand women who don't know anything. Like, how are they supposed to know what they're chasing? Mm. Conrad says these people are just insecure. I do think the insecurity is a turnoff. But fake confidence is also a turnoff, but it does work, right? H says if you live in a reality that desperation is easy to have, hard to get rid of. You'll be too anxious to make the first move. That's true. Caitlin says, I don't want to be asked out. I don't want to date at all. The fantasy is fun. And the joke of being lonely and single is when I play out, but I'm not in a place for that. Fair. Camp Camp says, I'm so flirty. I'm so flirty, bro. Hannah says, they both want to be rescued by a prince and aren't willing to be saved. It's very true. All the people I know, uh, women wise, not men, women wise, that are really desperate to be in a relationship also want a man who like does the gesturing, which I think is interesting. You know what I mean? I couldn't wait. I couldn't. I don't care about that. But what does is that true? Like, I don't I can't imagine this is true. No amount of self-love or friendship love or any other type of love can make up for the lack of romantic love. I'm not. That's very hard for me to process. Right. I love when people also suggest hobbies like I'm going to cuddle with my gardening on the couch. I think they suggest hobbies because you can meet people through them. Um, they never suggest this to meet people. They suggest this as things to distract. That could be true, but I don't recommend that either. I recommend just living your fucking life. You have one life to live. Live the best life you can live. And if you meet the love of your life, great. If you don't, who fucking cares, bro? The fact that you even exist is the miracle or like is the anomaly. It's it's crazy, right? John says some people can show love in a toxic controlling way, which other people can pick up on and that keeps people away. This That idea of like, I have so much love to give. I want to give it to someone. Well, then give it to someone. And if you don't give it to someone, you're waiting to give it to someone special. That's confusing to me. I don't also have this lived experience. So I'm trying not to discount her lived experience. Because again, I'm not her and she's not me. And so maybe there is something to this. I just I have a hard time like thinking that romantic love is the love that's like necessary. You know what I mean? I just don't get that. But I wondered if you guys had some insight. So let's move this back. Okay. Um, <laughs> I picked this one. Because okay. <clears throat> Check this out. Because I'm trying to imagine what kind of person will be with her. I assume she's straight, but I don't know. Right? But look at this one. <laughs> the video says, do you never leave the house? Like how? So again, just like in the kidology example, when we talked to Kid about this, it's not that they're not dating. But kidology is looking for the love of her life. So she can't just end up with anyone. So she is dating. That's not the problem. And then with this girl, I don't know what she's looking for, right? I picked this one because it made me laugh. Do you never leave the house? Like how? 
listen, I wish I never left the house because I have a homebody through and through. But that's so nice, and lots of people have been super nice on this post. Best sparkling water, mineral water. Not an ad, just something I'm drinking. But I wanted to show you what I'm gonna have for lunch, dinner. I got these at Costco, they're really good. But let me be real for a second. There's a whole playlist as to why I think I'm still single, where I talk about singles more. This isn't the first time I posted about this. Um, but it is interesting to me to see so many people suggesting certain things. And a lot of them are things that I've tried. Um, but part of what that video was about was just expressing that loneliness and being able to sit in that grief that I think a lot of people mm. um, deal with. And see, grief. Those are negative words. Those are like, why would you be grieving the fact that you're single, right? That's a lot for me to process, you know? Conrad says there are three types of love according to the Greek, sexual love, friendship love, and romantic love. Um, so I think nothing can replace romantic love. I agree. But I also then have to question, like, why is she grieving? See how she's grieving it? Wouldn't it just be a different kind of love? You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's something about it seems off, but. And I got a lot of like go do this go do that go to the other to try to fix things and i'm not saying that like i'm like close to the idea of fixing things fixing my loneliness i'm just saying it's a lot more complicated and sometimes it's just our initial responses to fix when often people just want to be seen or heard or valued or like understood so um while i'm appreciative of all the suggestions um i'm terrified of animals <laughs> so that's off the list uh i have a people serving job where i'm doing service basically for my job all the time so i'm volunteering serving doing things for others all the time and that fulfills things um and i've done dating websites i've done all those kind of things um and so yeah just as a quick fyi i've done a lot of it so my intent wasn't for people to like tell me what I needed to do, but I do appreciate to appreciate to appreciate. Oh my gosh, I appreciate people caring, and I'm gonna continue to talk about how I feel. And if you want to follow along, great. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'm gonna fix myself some chicken crumbles with salad and drink my drink. Bye. Yeah, interesting, huh? Like her energy is so interesting. So she's probably just looking for somebody who matches that energy, which would take a very specific person, right? Okay, I turned 40 this year and I've never been in love. I've never been in a relationship. And That's interesting to me. God, I was in love at 15, right? I had like a little homeschool boyfriend. I, I had a girlfriend in high school. We held hands. You never even liked somebody? You've never even, like, thought I'm in love? Like, that's the part that's interesting. Like, that's what I'm saying. There's something interesting happening. It's just not most, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm, Ma'am? Like, even, even people I know who have had similar stories, had boyfriends or had at least one relationship or thought they were in love at some point or even were, like, thinking this is the one. Like, she's never even had any relationship or something like that. And I've had never, no one ever asked me out on a date. And sharing that is really shameful for me because I can remember being in my early 20s and uh, being with a group of new friends that I didn't know very well and them all talking about like their first kiss and dates that they've been on and thinking about how to pretend or lie that I've had experiences that I've never had. Uh, maybe she's aromantic and wants it because it's what society has made her believe. That's may I'm so open to that suggestion. Because again, there's something about her energy where I'm like, girl, if you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But you know what I mean? Brooke says if you're homeschooled, it's also different. I mean, I was homeschooled and then I went to public school. I don't know. Did she go to private school or something? I don't know, Restless, if she went to private school or public school. I don't know anything about her life. You know? I don't know. Isn't that interesting? Alice says maybe she's aromantic and doesn't know, uh, doesn't know so it wouldn't fulfill by any – she wouldn't be fulfilled by any relationship if she had it. I'm telling you, bro. I'm so grateful for TikTok because I've seen other people talk about this and it has helped me feel less alone because I truly felt like there was something legitimately deeply wrong with me for my lack of experience. And I knew that most of that, especially in like my teenage years when I was in the late 90s, early 20s, was because I was fat. And I felt like if only I could lose weight, then maybe somebody would love me and maybe somebody would think. 
fat women, fat men are in relationships all the time. Fat people be fucking left and right. I know so many fat people that get fucked, bro. So there ain't no way that it was just her fatness. But it, ironically enough, the other people I know in her category also had weight problems. Funny enough, the other people I know in her category also had weight problems. They talk in very similar ways. They look almost exactly alike in different variations, like same aesthetic almost. But I'm telling you, it's not about their fatness because those people I know in my life have actually been pursued. They just did the rejecting. But there's something in their, their so okay, so then there's the, they look older than they are mixed in with a weight problem, mixed in with pointing a figure, finger of why they think they're single, but I don't think that's it. My theory is this category of person, it's not about their bigness. It's just, it's just, it, it's the easy way to make an excuse because sometimes it's about fatness. But in her case, I have a feeling it's not. I don't know. That's my theory. And my, my theory is in this category of person, it's not their weight, but in their heads, because they won't find the real problem, it just sounds good to say it's their fatness. That's my theory. I could be wrong. I think I was desirable or worth worth it. Yeah. Okay. I agree with you, Sarah. It's it's um it's her aura, aura, not her weight. I agree. It's her vibe. Her vibe is very unattractive to me. It's not the way she looks. It's not her fatness. It's her vibe. Something about her vibes make me like. I don't like this. Whatever this, whatever, I feel bad about myself. I feel bad. Not about myself, but I feel bad. Like I feel depressed. And she's not very uplifting. Maybe it's because she doesn't seem very uplifting. She's just sad. And it's making me sad. Why is she so sad? You know? So there's a certain kind of loneliness, loneliness that I think comes along with this um, and a sense of kind of always being on the outside looking in. There's an Indigo Girl song that kind of talks about one day finding love and 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 I have she also got dead eyes and dead facial expressions. Maybe she's just a sociopath. Maybe she has ASPD. Antisocial personality disorder. Like, you know what I mean? She's kind of dead in the face. I'm getting nothing warm. She doesn't like animals. I don't think she said anything about kids yet, but she already said she doesn't like animals. She might not even like kids. It's like, what do you like? You know? Always related to a part in that song. And it says, uh, guess I wasn't the best one to ask me myself with my face pressed up against love's glass to see, to see the shiny toy I've been hoping for, the one I can never afford. The wide world spins and spits turmoil and the nation's toil for peace, but the pause of fear upon your chest, only love can soothe that beast. And it has made me cry endless buckets of tears because that is a legitimate feeling that I've had and I've never felt like others could relate to me in that way. And I think I still feel unworthy of love and I'm still trying to figure out why it is that um, I don't date much, even when I did online dating or tried to do that. Um, but it just was something really hard for me. And maybe it does come back to that core thing of like not feeling worthy of love. And because I don't believe in that thing that people say that you have to love yourself before others can love you. I don't think that that's true at all. Ma'am. Because I've seen pure love and real love um, come from me for other people, friends and family members in my life. And I have a deep well of love. So I don't think that that... I don't... I almost don't believe her. Again, not to talking about her, the consciousness. But I wouldn't... I wouldn't know if she feels love for anyone. Even the way she talks about it, guys, I'm not... Like, again, I feel no warmth in her face when she talks about it. There's no, like... I love them and they're wonderful. And so then I'm like, okay, what is this? Is this autism? Is this ASPD? It's like she has none of the expressions that, and then maybe this is my neurodivergency where I'm like, your face isn't saying anything though. So I can't actually tell if you're happy. Like you say you love people, but it's not even in your face. Your eyes don't glow. You're not indicating anything with a smile line. Like her face so smooth at 40 because she never smiled in her life, a girl. And so I'm just trying to figure out like what's going on, sis. Like, you know what I mean? That is it, but I do feel like there's, because I've gone without it for so long, there's this sense that I don't deserve it and that maybe I'm impeding myself somehow because I feel like anybody wanting me or wanting to love me or experience what it would be like, it, it, like there's something wrong with them if they want to. And maybe that is putting up a wall that I can't see. 
there's something there. Her, you guys said she seems like untreated depression. She could just have depression. This could just be depression. So I guess if you've never experienced love, just know that you're not alone. And I'm working really hard on this healing journey to figure out that it doesn't. She's not talking about family love, right? Because didn't she say her family is really like she loves them? Mean that I am not a good person, that I'm not somebody that deserves love. Nobody deserves love. All right. Thank Nobody deserves anything. Um, but that doesn't mean she, she doesn't seem like a bad person at all, right? She seems like a perfectly good person, you know. Thank you so much for your comment. Discord said you absolutely have to love yourself, aka know your worth, before you can have a healthy relationship. Keep working on that and the rest will follow. Um, I, I do believe that knowing your worth is super critical important. But I also have like a little bit of a different perspective maybe on like the necessity of having that in place before you get a relationship because I grew up hearing that all the time and I want to just explain why it was hurtful. So like as human beings, we're always developing, right? We're continually working and progressing. Well, a lot of people are at trying to be better versions of ourselves. And when it comes to loving yourself, um, that is honestly one that I think is a lifelong journey for so many people. And so to have like the qualifier out there to be like, you have to have this before you can have this um, is what I've heard my entire life. And that has felt like it's diminished my love, the current love I have for other people that doesn't have anything to do with the love that I am trying to build for myself. So like a lot of the reasons that I struggled with loving myself had to do with childhood trauma and going through some SA at a very young age, which caused quite a bit of damage in how I viewed myself. And it was something that I kept hidden and very secret throughout the majority of my growing up years. And there are some components of that trauma that I won't ever recover from that I'm continuously working on healing from. And um, I heard a lot. You. Well, she just said it. She just said it. She just said why she's not in a relationship because she can't handle one right now. She's busy still recovering. Yeah, she pro like she's not she can't. It's not. Like, that's what it is. That's why we say it's trauma. Like she just said, she's still healing. She has insane trauma from when she was a kid. Girly, people can't just come rescue you from your childhood trauma. You do have to kind of figure that out. But I wonder if she's waiting for someone to come like rescue her from that. But yes, that's a good reason of why you're not connecting with people and you're not finding romantic love, right? I do hope she's in therapy. Cannot be loved by anybody until you love yourself. And that always was so painful because I had a lot of um, anger and hatred for myself, but based on the trauma that I experienced. And I guess like the other component is that I saw people who, you know, you know struggle to, to like themselves or to love themselves and, and they, you know, were in relationships and had those experiences. And so I, I think it's just hard to say that it, that has to be there before you can experience those things, because that felt so depressing for me as a young teen and into my early 20s, because I had such levels of trauma and deep hatred that I thought, well, this is out of this is out of the question. I'll never get that. And I guess maybe we're saying the same thing because I think maybe in the end it's yeah. the idea that I don't have to have it in place and I don't have to have that, okay, I can fully love myself, now I can be in a relationship. Like I don't think it's an either or. I think what's hopeful for me is when I can tell myself and when I can tell other people, like regardless of if you love yourself fully, you're worthy of receiving love and giving love. Does it help to to love yourself and to like yourself? Obviously, to create those healthy relationships like that you're mentioning. But I don't think it's a prerequisite because if it was, then I think part of those pieces of my soul that won't be healed and that will ha still continue to have difficulty in loving myself, I'll never get to that point. So does that mean that I... Ooh, um, this is a philosophy quandary. This is a philosophy quandary. I don't get love at all. And I, I don't think that that's true. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying. I'm just saying that for me, I want people and I want myself to know that like, even if I'm not at that end goal of how I love myself, I'm still worthy of it right now. I deserve nope. it and I'm nope. okay to have it nope. right now. No. Nope. Okay. This is therapy. Okay. The dilemma with a trauma victim is they need specific words for their brain. But for my brain, thinking I deserve love is bad for my brain. Because thinking I deserve it puts me on a pedestal that I don't think coincides with my philosophy about the world. So for my brain, it, I, I can't use language like I deserve love because that would mean that I believe we're more than animals on a planet. 
And so I, I can't play that game with my brain. But for her brain, she probably doesn't think that. I don't know what she believes. So she needs I deserve love because she felt like she didn't deserve love. But I felt like more like who actually deserves love is the question. So this is why trauma and philosophy, I mean, therapy and philosophy go so hand in hand. Because again, it's like, how do you heal your trauma without even knowing what part of the population you're in? So I'm part of the population that was like, like that was... I look at myself like data and I am part of the population that got graped. Okay, cool. So like now I know what category I'm in. Then it's like, oh, I'm part of the population that's a woman. Okay. I'm part of the population that's gender fluid. Okay, cool. I'm part of the population that's queer. Okay, cool. I'm part of the population that, and all of these things that make me a part of a community also alienate me from another community. So I'm part of the population that's a Syrian, which makes me definitely not Italian, right? So, okay. So I'm categorizing myself in all these different things. And so I look at it and I go, okay, then I look at myself and think like, and to be in a healthy relationship, I have to have a healthy relationship with myself. Not to say that I have to figure out all of the issues I have with myself, not to say that I need to be perfect before finding love, but I have to be on the healthier side of it. So it's not about loving yourself in order to love other people. It's having a healthy relationship with yourself enough that you can have a re healthy relationship with somebody else. Because again, when you have an unhealthy relationship with yourself, you don't have the room to have a healthy relationship with somebody else. I believe you cannot have an unhealthy relationship with yourself and a healthy relationship with someone else. I think those things end up hurting other people and you end up impacting your friendships and relationships, which is why often when parents don't have healthy relationships with themselves, that impacts their partners and their children. It's why when your boss doesn't have a healthy relationship with themselves, it impacts their employees. It's why when we don't have a healthy relationship with ourselves, we take it out on our neighbors or people we're driving next to on the freeway. So when I think about how trauma impacts people, it's things like this. This is a reaction to trauma. And so this idea, even the way she's thinking about deserving love is rooted in her trauma because she felt like she never deserved love. The next step after therapy is philosophy. Do you actually think people deserve love? Well, what does that mean about what you think humans are doing on the planet, right? Maiden says, thinking you deserve love also takes the agency out of your hands and makes you a victim to those who choose not to love you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Having a tool, having tools is always helpful when you're in a romantic partnership. True. So again, when I think about this, I'm thinking about all the different layers. So eventually, let's say she goes to trauma, uh, trauma therapy, and she gets better. Then she has to decide, okay, do people actually deserve love? Or where did I get that from? Like, where did I get that idea from? That people deserve love, right? Like, what does that even mean? And that that's a very long, that's its own journey in of itself, right? Okay. Now, because she has a loving family, though, I think she should stop, start there. Now, the question is, who's the person who essayed her as a kid? That's the hard part. Who's that? Is that person alive? Are they dead? Are they still in her life? That's the part that's interesting because that changes a lot. You know what I mean? Okay, this isn't direct. Oh my god, my love, you ain't missing out on anything. It's okay to want love. Gosh, this isn't direct. And again, she already stated she has a good relationship, and she's you saw it. Her relationship with her mom was so cute, <clears throat> you know. Um, this idea, ooh, see, there's we put romantic love on such a pedestal. We really do. It's so I can't. My brain can't go there. But that's why I'm trying to be open using her brain. Like, what is her brain going to teach me about my own brain? to this commenter but i have some thoughts and this really isn't response to this it literally is just to say that it is okay to want love it is okay to want that and even to take it a step further as human beings we are hardwired to want that and whenever i talk about being yes but i don't think it has to be romantic i don't think we're hardwired to to need romantic love i think we want love but i don't think it has to be romantic I don't think that, but I think that that's the difference is like, is she saying love from a romantic partner? Cause she said she already had it from her mom. Being 40 and being single, I get this type of comment and I totally understand where it's coming from, that there are a lot of relationships and, and love out there that is painful, hurtful, harmful, and quite frankly, not something that anybody should want. And mainly I'm just bringing this up for my younger self who always felt shamed whenever I talked about feeling pain at my lack of love when people um, acted like, you know, wanting love was something that maybe I shouldn't have. 
or not even that I shouldn't have, that was weird or strange. As human beings, we are hardwired to want and to need love in our life. Is it always romantic love that we need? No. But there is nothing wrong. Nothing. Then what is she saying? That's what I mean. There is nothing wrong with wanting love. But she said she already had it from her family. So what is this series about? Wrong. And I want anybody who feels opposite of this to hear me. There's nothing wrong with feeling lonely and sad and wishing who the crap is at my door to have love like at all. Okay, that was the most random. Yeah, but the hashtags are never been in love, never been in a relationship, single forever, true love relationship. She's contradicting herself. She doesn't believe this. I believe this. I believe it's good to have love and it doesn't have to be romantic. That's why my life, I never worried when I was single. I don't think any of my friends or family could ever recall me ever being like saying anything like this when I was single. I just didn't think about it because I had a relationship with myself. But she is saying this. Her whole brand right now is that she's single forever and she needs romantic love even though she has family love. Thus proving that she actually does believe it's romantic love you need because that's the one she's complaining she doesn't have. I'm confused. Same thing ever, some neighbor boys just came to my door to show me a dance move. They killed it. He was wearing a Top Gun outfit, costume, costume, and did a little dance. Okay, I can talk more about this, but I guess I will just end it here for right now with just con the continued phrase that it's okay to want and need love. And you don't have to feel shame if you do want it. I felt that for far too long in my life. And then when you feel that shame, it's okay. You can kind of let that go and just realize that it's part of the human experience to want love. Romantic love isn't all that there is. There's lots of love that can fill your life, but it is okay to want romantic love, to sure. grieve the loss of it, to grieve the loss of the experiences you'll never have, the dances you never went to, or the first dates, or the first kisses, or this isn't my experience. I purposely skipped my prom because like who wants to go to a dance? I don't care about any of these things. But that's the thing is like I wasn't a kid who cared about having that stuff. Like I didn't think it mattered. But she might be quote unquote. Yeah, she might put a lot of burden on herself. Like I didn't have those things and maybe I wish I had them. Like I don't wish I had them. I never regret not going to my high school prom as like a senior or a junior. That is <laughs> I never think about it. Absolutely. I, gra I didn't even go to my own graduation. I don't give a fuck. No, I don't want to go. Like, I'm not that person, like, who gives a fuck what everyone else is doing. But that's the problem. Does she care what everyone else is doing? Because she doesn't look like anybody else. Guys, this is what I'm saying. How do people who missed out in life keep missing out? Look at her. Her whole aura isn't even matching today's modern standards. She looks like she's coming out of the 80s, which makes me feel like she's still not experiencing things her people in her 40s are experiencing. So then I get confused. Like, it feels like she's not even keeping up with the modern times. She doesn't dress like people right now. She's dressing older. So it's like, why why aren't you doing that now? Any of those type of things, and you can seek after it, it is okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Oh, heads up. I did go to my homeschool prom at 14. I had three of the boys interested in me. Thank you. It was my birthday weekend. Shout out. That you want it, and you shouldn't feel shame. Um... But to be fair, all three of those boys were into me because I was into them. See how that worked? All three of the boys in, in homeschooling that I was that were like even giving me a little bit of attention, I asked them out. I asked a boy to prom. When I went to homeschool prom, I asked him out. By the way, I had a boyfriend at the time, but another girl asked him out and we couldn't tell people we were dating. So I was like, now I have to ask a boy out. So I asked his friend out and we all went out together. It was weird, but it was it worked. But the point is, is that like I still had to ask boys out. Like I asked my husband out. Like, just ask them out. Like, hey, I think there's something between us. Like, I just ask people out. That's the difference. None of y'all are willing to be tops. Now, to be fair, I am naturally a top. I'm a switch, baby. Maybe that's also playing a thing. That you desire that to be part of your life. It's part of the human experience. I love you. That felt really weird. Yeah, I won't do that weird. again. Sorry. She seems Okay, sweet. with all this fear of food. She seems really sweet. But yeah, part of me wants to just say that you're a pussy when it comes to your life. Not her, this category of person. I just feel like people are pussy when it comes to their life. You know what I mean? Like people are too pussy to handle their life. And I think that's often because of their personality, trauma, or the way they see the world. And we already know she's got trauma. So I'm not victim blaming. I'm just saying you got to actually go for it though. Floating around, do my skincare with me while I tell you how it's my. So now we must dress like everyone else? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying 
you need to know what category you're in. So if you're not going to, like, I don't dress like everyone else, but I dress like the way I want to dress. Like I dress my ideal. I do dress the way I want to dress. And so the question is, is she dressing how she wants to dress? Is she actually living the life she actually wants to live? Because if she's doing everything she really wants to do, then why the fuck is she worrying about a boyfriend? Because she could have gone and, you know what I mean? It's not about dressing like everybody else. It's about dressing how you want to dress. And if this is how she wants to dress, then she has to understand like she's a very specific category of person. And most people aren't like this. My parents' fault that I'm single at 40 because they named me after my single aunt when they had named me something else originally. Okay, so I was always going to be named Mia. My mom's from Argentina. Mia means mine. She was super possessive and wanted me to never forget that I am her daughter. So on my birth certificate, what? my name Wait, says Mia Wait. Veronica. Nope. Okay, I don't get with it. all this fear floating around, do my skincare with me while I tell you how it's my parents' fault that I'm single at 40 because they named me after my single aunt when they had named me something else originally. Okay, so I was always going to be named Mia. My mom's from Argentina. Mia means mine. She was super possessive and wanted me to never forget that I am her daughter. So on my birth certificate, my name says Mia Veronica. But my aunt, my dad's sister, was named, oh, geez, that's way too much, Norma. And because she was single and into her late 30s and were Mormon, and that's basically the kiss of death, they, I mean, nicely wanted to um, honor Norma because she was an amazing person. And they decided to change my name and name me after her. So I was afraid of becoming single since the age of like five or six years old. And I'll tell you why. So in the Mormon church, um, you can only enter the highest kingdom of glory if you're married. And I was taught that principle at a young age, which let's not get into. Oh, oh. Mormon and S8 as a kid. Okay, the trauma be deep. The trauma be deep. Church trauma? Who called it? Somebody said it earlier. Someone said she seems like she has religious trauma. Who said it? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're, we're going to clear a picture. Livy says, this is the part where I kind of get it. The desire for romantic love is different. You can't smex your friends in that intimate relationship type of way. It's the desire to have that inner circle person. Okay, yes. But also, like, I know what that's like. Okay, so yes, I agree with you. I think the love I have for my partner is different than the love I have for my friends. The way I have intimacy with my partner is different than the way I've ever intimacy to anyone else in my whole life, right? I agree with you. But yet when I was single, I never thought about needing it. I never like cried about it. I never complained about it. I never thought to myself, like, I just need this love. I was just like, ah, oh, I'll find it or I won't find it. Eh, I'll find it or I won't find it, you know? I just never worried about it too much. Even though I was always looking and always dating and always thinking, like trying for it, I also wasn't like complaining. I wasn't venting. I wasn't getting on the internet and saying like, oh, I need to find love. But I was openly exploring love with you guys. I was like so into it because I wanted to put myself out there, which worked. Thank you. But I was never like, this was never my story. So the question is, yes, romantic love is different. But why, why do some people not understand that like, like, why do you need it? Like, I don't feel like I need it. Why do you need it? You know what I mean? And maybe that's just like we build different, which is a good answer. We build different, you know, that could be the answer. And to doctor and let's just talk about this experience because I don't even know. I'm in the middle of a faith journey. OK, um, oh. anyway, so I was terrified that I would end up not. So she's still Mormon. She says, I'm in a faith journey. This is a religious woman. Well, that's why she's virginal and dresses like a Mormon. I wondered why she dressed like a Mormon. Well, she is a Mormon. So hold on. I'll rewind it just a little. You can only enter the highest kingdom of glory if you're married. And I was taught that principle at a young age, which let's not get into doctor and let's just talk about this experience because I don't even know. I'm in the middle of a faith journey. OK, um, anyway, so I was terrified that I would end up not in heaven, the highest degree of heaven. So being single, I always thought about how awful that would be if I had to be that forever. And then I started getting bullied in um, elementary school and people were pretty cruel. And so I thought, oh my gosh, um, I, I'm i gonna be single for the rest of my life. 
So I love my Aunt Norma. She lived next door to us. She had taken care of my grandpa. She was wonderful. And that's why I was always super ashamed that I was terrified to become her. And I never told anybody that when I was younger. And now I feel still really bad because the only thing that terrified me about becoming Norma was her singleness. And because I had the religious component topped with the societal component that you're not worth anything unless you're married, that's something that you see in movies and TV. You know what? The more I look at her face, the more Mormon she looks. I know a lot of women, women that are Mormon and live in Utah and look just like her. Isn't that amazing how you look like your tribe, bro? It's the eyebrows, too. It's just this subliminal undercurrent that people are more worthy if they are married. And that's not true. Um, I was terrified of being Norma and felt that for a very long time. Mm. So definitely for a long time, I truly felt in my heart that my parents had jinxed me by changing my name from Mia Veronica to Mia Norma. And that's why I would be single forever. Ooh. I saw Mia Veronica as this bad bitch, thin, boys loved her. She was just like living the life. And then I was over here being me and Norma. When in reality, I had been bullied and had a lot of trauma from that. And then I had childhood SA and had a lot of trauma from that. And then I binge ate because of my childhood trauma. And that created a whole hell of a lot of problems. So like no one was going to be in a relationship with me. But most importantly, I wish you go back in time and tell that girl, you wish you could be Norma. You wish you could be half as amazing as she is, that her singleness didn't define her. She was an incredible person. And I'm lucky to have had her in my life. And your singleness doesn't define you. You're worthy of love right now. Okay, I took a minute to respond to this one because I think I was thinking. Okay, how about advice on dealing with those feelings? I don't feel ashamed for wanting to, wanting it, rather shame for not finding it. Dealing with my shame from lifelong singleness, what do you do with those feelings of shame uh, for not finding love? What do you do with those feelings of shame for not finding love? Like, what do I personally do? And I guess the first thing is just to acknowledge the fact that we live in a society that places a lot, a lot of value on your relationship status and how that correlates to who you are as a person. So just normalizing for you and for me that, you know, it's okay that we feel shame. It's not okay that we feel shame, but it's understandable that we feel shame because um, when you go a long time without finding what everybody says you should have, it is going to hit you like, okay, well then there's something wrong with me. And probably like you, I've had people ask me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I've gone on a couple first dates and guys have been like, what's wrong with you? That you've never dated anybody. Flat out, just like that. And so it hits you and of course creates more shame. It's that she was traumatized as a child. This is really important. It is a question people ask. My partner and I were just talking about this. It's a red flag if you're always in a relationship and it's a red flag if you've never been in one. The question is why? And usually trauma for both. It is both probably trauma that you are extremely promiscuous and always have to be in a relationship. You cannot stand being single. And it is probably trauma that you've never been in a relationship. And it is trauma. She was essayed as a kid. And that's the problem. She needs to own that. She needs to own that she hasn't been in a relationship because she had this horrible, horrible thing happen to her as a child, which is disgusting and awful, right? And same thing for people that are so traumatized, they're always in a relationship. Like you're never single. You're never giving yourself a breather. You can't go to sleep alone. You always have to have a body next to you. Hello? Trauma. Trauma, 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 trauma. I want to see her own that. She already told us she was essayed as a kid. I want her to say to those people, yeah, there's a good reason I've been single. And I need to acknowledge that. Like, hello? The other thing is just acknowledging that you are going to feel it when people you meet for the first time or they ask you about your life or whatever. <clears throat> and the topic of relationships come up. I know and I try to prep myself that like I'm going to hit have a wave. A wave will come and it will be shame. So like just being ready for that helps me get some things in place in my brain that allow me to maybe not hold on to it for as long as I used to. And so I think that's the thing is just lessening maybe how long you f you feel it versus getting rid of it. Cause I don't think I'm ever gonna get rid of feeling that, that shame. I don't think it's a red flag if you've never been in a relationship, as long as you're not also desperate for one. Because then it feels weird that you've never even casually dated, right? I count casual dating as just as valid. Like, oh yeah, I've dated people. I've just never vibed. Like I haven't found my person yet is a different attitude than I've never been in a relationship ever. That's like a different vibe, right? So like saying I've never been in a relationship yet is only a problem, literally only a problem. If you're like, um, 
Like if it's not what you want kind of thing. Like she's never been in a relationship, but she really wants to be in one. And yet again, like when people say like, oh, why haven't you been in a relationship? She should probably know that answer. And the answer is that she was essayed as a kid and didn't get the right therapy for it. And it's still haunting her. And it makes it hard for her to connect with people. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's my opinion. And that she um, doesn't know how to explain that to people and people don't know how to deal with that. And what if in her relationship she doesn't want to have sex and she won't have sex ever again? That doesn't matter. Like lots of relationships can be fine without sex. Like sex is not uh, the make or break of a real relationship when you're talking about loving the love of your life. So again, is that the issue? You know what I mean? She needs to find somebody that really gets that. But more than that, she needs to be able to explain it to somebody. She has to be able to explain to people, yeah, I have a rough time around relationships because when I was essayed as a kid, it really stunted my growth. I wasn't sure if I was entitled to love or even deserved it. It made me question things, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? So I think the first thing is I answer confidently and I've had to train myself to do that. So somebody says, um, oh, cool, like your husband or your kids or and they kind of bring up me like when they're meeting me for the first time and they don't know anything about me and they say, you're not married. You don't, you're not with a partner, like you don't have kids. I let that initial wave come over me, but I say like, oh yeah, I'm not, like I'm not married. And I fake a lot of the confidence that I don't feel. And then that kind of dampens it. But then there's like this weird, awkward haze that kind of exists in the air. Cause I think the person feels bad that they made assumptions that I was in a relationship and I'm not. And so, you know, I just continue with that confidence and I say to myself, and I think in my mind, all of the things that I do value about myself that have nothing to do with a relationship. Like I'm a really good listener. I'm a wonderful daughter. I'm a great sister. I'm a great aunt. I love to read. And I think um, I try to educate myself on different things. Like, so I try to think in my brain all the things that I find value of within myself when those feelings of shame come. And that also dampens it because it's like, you know, no, my value as a whole human being isn't dependent just on the fact I'm dating somebody, have dated somebody. True. Um, married to somebody True. i'm a full hu full human being and then the other thing i could suggest is maybe finding a really good therapist that could help you get down to the core Voice. as to like what is that shame from nice. and then how to work on that nice. and i wish you so much success in overcoming that but please know you're not alone i get it okay 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 on my post about being single at 40 and never having been in a relationship i had a lot of people tell me you're not missing anything now, I'm not talking about the extremes. I'm not talking about the abusive relationships. I'm talking about the regular relationships that I think all humans seek to strive for. So if you're a person that's been in one of those, I'm just nicely telling you it is so not right to tell somebody that they're not missing anything if they've never been in love, if they've never had a million of the little experiences that as human beings. Oh, I think there's a, there's a dissonance there. Hold on. I'm talking about the regular relationships that I think all humans seek. No, nobody gives a fuck about the relationships that didn't end up in marriage. Like, I mean, I don't know what bubble you're in, but like, I don't give a fuck about any of the relationships I had before I was married. I mean, they were important and I needed them to grow as a person. But like, I look at those as like hardships I had to go through to get to this person and be this person that I am now. I don't think I look, I mean, I look back on those and I can have fond stories of them, but I also could have skipped all of them. Like, I don't know. They're just like, they're things that had to happen, I guess, to come here. But I don't think anyone in my life looks back on their past relationships as anything other than things they had to do to get to where they're at. So is she like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Maybe I just belong to a bubble that like, doesn't like to waste time very much. So like, all we see it is like things we had to do. So I'm not sure what she's saying because the only relationship that's like, the best relationship is the one where you got married and wiped each other's butts because you both have Alzheimer's and you forgot how to. So I think there's like a confusion right here. We're like, does any, do you guys look, I don't, I mean, I could tell you fond stories, obviously. I was like, oh, 15, it was really cute. And I have all these stories or, but like ultimately all of those were just placeholders for the love of my life. You know what I mean? Even all of those romantic stories weren't as good as like some of my best single experiences to strive for. So if you're a person that's been in one of those, I'm just nicely telling you it is so not right to tell somebody that they're not missing anything if they've never been in love, if they've never had a million. I mean, I think what you're missing is probably like the learned experience of learning to like share space with someone, maybe? You know, the little experiences that as human beings we want to have most of the time. But you can have that from casual dating. 
That's what I'm saying. Oh, I would love for her to. Oh, okay, let's let's stop pausing. But I want to know what she means. To me, it's like this analogy. Okay, it is winter in the dead of winter, and you're wearing a nice, beautiful parka, and I walk up it to you in a sweater, and I am a little bit cold, and I'm talking about feeling cold, and you look at me and say, "This isn't all it's cracked up to be. This coat can get too hot. Like it's really hot sometimes, and it's not always winter, and so you're better off in the cold sweater, even though I can see you shivering." Side note, I was trying a new makeup look. Um, I feel like it's too much, so please don't point that out. I know that it's too much. I'm just sitting at my house. I it's fine. had just showered. My hair is wet. Anyway. And I don't know what it is, but like literally my entire life when I've talked about not being in a relationship, the response mostly that I get from people that have been in a relationship is them trying to tell me how it's not worth it, how it's not good, how it's not fun, how it's harder than I think. I understand all of those things. I, like you, am a complex human being and I can logically look at a lot of different things. When I'm talking about never being in a relationship and missing the experience of love, I'm talking about the good parts of it. Are there not good parts? Have there not been good parts? If so, you wouldn't be seeking out after it. No, she doesn't get it. No. I mean, yes, there are good parts, but who cares about any of those things? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I, like, girl, you have mascara on. That's not too much. She's so sweet being like, this is too much makeup. Girl, you have like some eyeshadow on. I love it. Yeah, this is like, this is a very interesting. She's talking to people who settled then. Yeah, because like I couldn't even, I don't know what she's talking about. Yeah. I mean, you can get those things from going out on first. The things to me she's talking about are like holding hands or going to the movies together. You can just do that with like a first date. Like the old, everything in my relationship up until marriage always felt weird because I was like, are you my person? And that was fun and that was good and I learned a lot and I love those people. But all of them seemed like I could have lived my life. If somebody said, do you want to do your life over without any of those experiences that went like any of your dating experiences and you found your partner, I'd probably say yes. Like if I could have saved myself, yeah, like absolutely. Like, but I liked all my friends. I would have kept all my friends and all my lovers. But if somebody was like, can you just erase the three adult relationships you had in your 20s and then still find your partner today? I probably would. But then maybe those relationships taught me a lot about my life in terms of finding my partner. And that's probably true. I mean, I learned a lot so much about myself by dating those people. But I also sought them out to learn about myself. So then I have to assume it's her Mormon bubble. Yeah, I guess realistically, as I think this out loud, I can't take away all the tools I learned through my 20s. Like dating all those people gave me so many tools to be a better partner and to be myself and to learn what I didn't want in a relationship. But also, I think her Mormonism is probably playing a huge role in this. But also, even my siblings that are super, super, super religious, they went on a lot of dates. They had dating partners. They courted people. They like had girls they'd bring over to get togethers and they had, you know what I mean? So I don't know how different the Mormon bubble is. I don't know much about it though. Hmm. I probably just don't get her because she's in the Mormon bubble. So for my other single people watching this, <sighs> um, it's kind of gaslighty when people try to tell you that you're not missing out on anything when you want a relationship. It's okay to have wanted a relationship, and it's okay for me to grieve things like um, dating in high school. It's okay for me to grieve. Who the fuck dates in high school, bro? Like, okay, that's another thing. Like, I'm grieving I didn't date in high school. Why? Then date. Like, don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. We weren't allowed to date in high school, but I like secretly had girlfriends and boyfriends anyways. That's what I mean. Like if you wanted to date in high school, why didn't you date in high school? And then if you feel like you missed out, it just wasn't your story. I don't know. I knew so many people who didn't date in high school. You're like 15. What does it matter? I don't understand why it matters. Things like being asked out. It's but do I not understand why it matters because I did it? But I did it regardless if I was allowed to or not. I just did it. I just didn't tell my parents like, I do. Mm. you know what I mean? Like, I don't know the difference between me just doing it anyways and people who are like, I never had that. And I was like, OK, it's just like you're dating when you're a kid. Like it's it's like you're pretending, you know, you're like pretending to be an adult as a kid. You know, how much weirder are Mormon kids, bros? Marky says, I believe in Mormonism. Teens are warned against dating before 16 and then they don't really date, but go out on group dates. That makes sense. I'm 20, but Misa says I'm 26 and I barely remember high school anyways. It feels like she's still stuck in high school. You know those adults that never stop thinking about high school or dating the people they dated 10 years ago? I'm not there. I'm fully in the present. 
But to be fair, I've always been that kind of person where my brain goes, okay, I'm here now. Oop, I'm here now. Oop, I'm here now. So like even when I would carry on trauma from like high school, I stopped about 20 something, like it went away. And then I was like, new thing. So maybe like certain brains and certain bubbles. And again, we're not watching to make fun of her. We're watching to kind of understand how we're different. Maybe her brain is still in high school, even though she's 40. She's 40 years old and she still is thinking about not dating in high school. I don't, I, mm -mm. it's okay for me to grieve things like what it feels like to hold somebody's hand for the first time or to be going to dinner with somebody where you're. Okay, hold up, hold up. Ultraviolet says normal like milestones. Okay, question though. Not everybody dated in high school. That is not a universal experience. And if you were like me, people only, it depends on the bubble. It depends on the bubble. In the Mormon bubble, is it normal to date in high school or not? Does she not even date in high school? She's never dated her whole life. But it's not, it can't be, it has to be her. That's what I mean. It has to do with her trauma. It's got to be. How do you go your whole life without dating and tell me it's not trauma? How? You're sharing common interests and you're really having a wonderful time. It's okay for me to grieve those things. It's okay for me to go to friends' weddings and while being happy for them at the same time, looking at that and thinking, wow, I wish I could have that. And don't even get me started on the grief that I feel as a person not being a mother. Veronica says, isn't her grieving her lack of romantic life similar to when you grieve not being a mother in the beginning of your diagnosis? No, because at the end of my grieving, I was happy. I didn't make a whole series on TikTok saying how I wished I was a mother. When I grieved being a mother, I gave it away. I moved on. She's not moving on. She's making a whole series. We're watching a whole series about her life being single. She's not grieving. She's not moving on. I moved on. I'm saying move on. Why isn't she moving on? She's not grieving. Or she's in the middle of grieving still. She hasn't moved on. When I grieved not being a mother, I let go of my desire because it went away and I accepted that. And now I'm think I'm like not even having kids and I'm not worried about it. And I'm like happy every day and I'm relieved and I'm celebrating. You don't see me on stream complaining that I'm not going to have kids. She made a whole TikTok series. Still upset she's single. Yeah, she's stuck. Exactly. She's totally stuck, bro. Because that's something I've always wanted. Um, not everybody feels that, but that's something that I had always wanted. And the grief that comes from that is immense. Now, I'm not trying to police what you can say. I'm just trying to give you a different perspective of what that would feel like uh, from somebody who hears that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I know that the reverse is at play too. I am never going to tell one of my friends who's talking to me um, or even on a post that I see, if somebody's saying that like marriage is hard and, and life is hard and kids are hard, I'm never going to be like, well, at least you have somebody. Like, Stop complaining. I guess all I'm saying is like, can we just have more compassion for one another's experiences? And I don't have to invalidate somebody else's experience to make myself feel better about my own i mean that is true and i don't want to invalidate her either but i want to see what she's doing so obviously we're not talking about her we're just trying to figure out for ourselves vibrancy says she's not grieving she's wallowing i agree ania says grief ends in acceptance right yeah like she should be grieving to accept ingrid says she's deaf wallowing in self-pity she feels very self-pitying to me and i think that's valid i think because she's not acknowledging that that's what she's doing I can't give her her gold star because she's not being self-aware enough. Not that she's looking for me to give it to her. But I think that's why people are looking at her like, why are you doing this? But also people can be wrong about a lot of things. Like people don't see people or understand them fully. So yeah, I think um, I think for me, she's just not accepting like that she might not run into her person. See, she has to understand like there is a person out there in the universe for her. She just hasn't run into them. But she also might have to do self-work to run into them at the right time. It sounds like she still has some work to do, but at least she mentioned therapy for other people, which means she's probably doing it herself. So I guess that's all I'm trying to say. All right. First kiss. I had my first kiss at 35. My first. So she has been kissed. You know how to kiss people, girl. It's an only kiss and it was horrible. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to talk about this on Beyonce's internet. However, however, she's mentioned Beyonce's internet. Taylor Swift. So she's in the girl bubble that likes these girls. So we know what bubble she's in. She's telling us, right? Interesting. Maiden says she isn't suffering wisely. True. It's okay because it's just a part of my story. And you're what you're. I've never had a good first kiss ever in my whole life. And I've had 
enough kisses in my life. I always think the first kiss is the worst kiss. Even when I first kissed my husband, no, I don't, I never have a good first kiss ever, ever, ever. I've never had that in my whole life because I'm incredibly anxious and it's awkward. But now after a few <laughs> practice rounds, now is steamy every time. But that's the problem is like I've never in my life had a good first kiss. So all these people that have had a good first kiss, good for you, girl, not my story. But you know what? It doesn't matter because practice makes uh, permanent. <laughs> You're witnessing kind of how I talk to myself when I sometimes prepare to talk about vulnerable topics. It's totally fine. There are people who are going to relate to this. You're not only this part of your life. You can be okay. It will be okay. All right, just get it out. Okay, so I have felt this way all of my life, like afraid and embarrassed and ashamed that I had not been kissed. I acted like I had when I was younger, like sure. that I had one experience because I didn't want to be just whatever people think when they think about somebody who's never been kissed. Okay, it's not even a big story. I went on a dating website. Um, I was trying to actively date at the time. Mm -hmm. I've only ever gone on first dates with people. Um, I had this first date with Wait, somebody. Wait, that's great. Why do people discount that? Ooh, that's a part of the narrative I don't like either. People go, I've only gone on first dates with people. Cool. Oh, I've never had someone pursue me further. Yeah, but like, that's probably good. That's probably why your skin's so smooth, girl, because you haven't had the stress of a relationship gone bad. Count yourself lucky. Can you imagine like if everyone saw that as a, f a green flag, like, oh, I keep going on these first dates, but I don't like anybody like this. But then she probably wanted to say yes to those people, but they said no to her. So there's probably a connection there. But to be fair, even I wouldn't date her because I'm afraid she hasn't dealt with her trauma enough that she's going to make it my problem. Because look, m I, you can't make your problems my problems, but I will be your best cheerleader. But don't make your problems my problems. My partner does not make his problems my problems. I don't make my problems his problems. But we definitely like are each other's cheerleaders. But like my responsibilities are my responsibilities. And I feel like she might make her issues my issues. And I don't like that. But why does she I wish they could just say, oh, my God, I've gone on all these great first dates. I've like learned so much about myself. But I think because they're waiting for that person to love them. They're like, are you my person? I mean, I do that, too. I'm like, are you my person? Nope. Next. Are you my person? Nope. Next. I think her attitudes may be. I'm guessing maybe it's like, are you my person? I hope you're my person. I am I would be happy if you were my person. And they're like, nope. And they're like, oh, maybe it's that. Maybe it because I'm the rejector. Oh, I am the rejector. Oh. My bad. I am the rejector. I've broken up all my relationships. And I say no to people more than they s Yeah, I've said no more. <sighs> okay, fine. She's having a very different lived experience. Fair. Okay, fair. We went to Big Bear Diner for nice. dinner, which why why are we going there for dinner? But okay, but maybe it's fine. It's fine. I'm just judging a lot of my own personal choices right now. So we finished eating dinner and he was like, I wanted to go for a walk, but it's raining. Do you want to sit in my car and talk? And I was like, yes, I'll sit in your car and talk. Hoping that I can get this over with, which is not the way that I feel like I would want my first kiss to go. But man, I'm 35 years old. I just want it over with so I can say that I've had one, right? So we're talking. He kisses me. I don't feel anything. And I also am judging the entire thing like I don't even know what I'm doing. I felt so juvenile and that's a trigger for me because when I was young, I had been S-8 as a child and I don't like the feeling of being a child. And so I'm in this weird experience Ooh. where I'm not even- Maybe that's why she has gray hair and she doesn't try to look younger or try to embrace her youth. Maybe that's why she's not silly. I wondered why she wasn't like silly and warm and like all those other things. Maybe she like literally doesn't allow herself to be. Oh, <gasps> bum, 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 bum. I'm liking that he's kissing me. He starts like biting my lip, which I'm like, all right, this is not what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. I kind of am like, yeah, um, I got to get going. I leave and I go home. And that's my first kiss story, which oh. is it's my only kiss story. And I didn't have any attraction to this person or any desire i just wanted to check something off of a list so then i like drive home feeling empty so i guess like i just want to say <laughs> i hope it happens for you and there was a part of me that felt justified and i can be like okay i've been kissed like i, I did check the box and something was validated in that but it wasn't the experience that i wanted and it's not something who the fuck is out here biting on the first kiss y'all crazy right that I would encourage people to do. Um, but I mean, actually to each his own. Do what you think you need to do. 
I'm rambling now because I feel super awkward about putting this on the internet. So I'm going to tap out. And if you are going to make fun of me, please don't. She seems really sweet, bro. She just seems like she's got some trauma. But I like I like her. But also she feels exhausting to me. But I like her. But she does kind of make me tired. But you know, everybody makes somebody tired. I mean, I make everybody tired. But like also, I think I'd be able to communicate with her like, girl, you're being a little too self-loathing. I'm over it. Or like, girl, if you want to first kisses, you should just go like, sometimes I think people do need to go to like events where they just kiss a bunch of people and you practice kissing and get over all your fears. You know, something like that. Like, I think sometimes with people like this, just hire a sex worker and practice, bro. Just practice with a sex worker. Get over your fear because sex is not that important. Yes, Conrad, we both just said it. She should hire a sex worker. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. I'm very sensitive. So how has a lack of romantic relationships my entire life, me being now 40, impacted who I am as a person? So society places a ton of importance on romantic relationships, and that's instilled at a very young age. Like, I can remember people talking about uh, when I was a kindergarten, first grade, all right, do you have any crushes? Like, who do you like? Like, the idea that at such a young age, we're already talking about people like liking other individuals is bonkers. I can't believe I just said bonkers. Ugh. Okay, cringe. But the lack of romantic connection, what it has done for me is felt unworthy of all the relationships I'm in. And I don't understand at all that people like me. Like even people following me on social media, but even like me being a daughter, a sister, a friend, I think at any moment, like that's gonna end. Like they can't like me. That just doesn't make any sense to me that someone would. And it's that component of yeah, I'm like the opposite where I'm like, of course you like me. I'm very likable. <laughs> Not because I'm just so like, I feel like I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about myself enough and I'm a pretty good friend, but also I can understand when people don't like me because that also makes sense. But see how that sounds like really like big headed, but then her sounds really self-loathing. You know what I mean? What's worse? Like, I feel like it's better to be friends with somebody who's like, who loves themselves and like is super confident than somebody who doesn't. But I know that even that comes off super narcissistic. But I just, I just, I have the proof is in the pudding. I'm good with friends. I show up on time. You know what I mean? I try to be there for people. I do my best to count boundaries. Like she feels like that trauma loop of I don't know why people would like me. That is, that's the red flag, right? That's the part that makes me feel like I'm going to have to do a lot of emotional labor for this girl to realize like I like her for a reason. And I, I tend to have friends that are very confident in themselves and like know people like them for a good reason because like all my friends are very lovable and likable. Why wouldn't people like you? I like you for good reasons. Like I don't just like people because I like people for good reasons. And so I feel like she has to understand like people like her for good reasons. But if she can't actually accept that, then that's the part where loving yourself is so important in order to have healthy friendships. What did I say earlier? If you don't have a relationship with yourself, a healthy relationship, it shows in your work and in your friendship. And that's what she just admitted out loud just now. Even with her friends and her family, she is like, why do they like me? That's the that's the part where her unhealthy is going to impact those relationships. I don't have to remind my friend why I love them every time they open their mouth. Like I need you to have some fucking confidence, bro. Some relationship with yourself because it's exhausting doing all this emotional labor for you. Like, you can't ask people to do that for you. You can't, okay? Go to a therapist. That's who you pay to do that emotional labor. Otherwise, your friends, you're because you're insulting your friends. You're basically saying you're so stupid for even liking me. Don't, don't, don't be rude to your friends. You should be, you should acknowledge your friends like you for a good reason, and it is a valid reason, and then respect them enough not to shit all over their choices. Because when you shit on their choices for liking you, you're really just making fun of your friends, bro of I've felt non-desirable for my whole life and I've wanted just an experience so that I can understand what that looks like and feels like but what's hard is that now that I'm older um now that I'm older and I didn't have practice when I was younger I feel even more naive uh when I try to engage in those relationships and so that feeling of undesirableness continues to snowball and to grow it's like a vicious 
cycle. And then I couple that with the trauma that I've gone through in my life. I've gone through sexual trauma at a very young age and kind of the uh, way that leaves somebody feeling and the difficulty that comes with that. And so it's just me seeking always to try to earn love, earn respect, earn that I'm good enough, but then never being able to receive what people give me. And sometimes I just feel like a black hole. I feel like all the love that comes in just siphons through and goes somewhere because I'm not able to make it stick and make myself believe that I am good enough, that I am worthy. Um, but that is something that I'm working on. So it's like I had the perfect storm. I was fat growing up um, and people made fun of me and bullied me because of that. And so that became an undesirable factor, right? Um, I was never seen as anybody romantic. Like anytime I tried, I was rejected. Every single time that I tried, I was rejected. And so so that adds to things and then on top of it i went through nope hold on let me rewind that bullied me because of that and so that became an undesirable factor right um i was never seen as anybody romantic like anytime i tried i was rejected every single time that i tried i was rejected and so that adds to things and then on top of it i went through childhood sa and uh, it was actually pretty psychologically horrific sure, and the things sure. that they said and told me about who I am mm -hmm. have stuck with me. And so mm -hmm. over the last few years, I've been trying to figure out how do I let love in and how do I allow myself to. I feel like the, con the, the video title shouldn't be like being single at 40. It should be like um, being single at 40 because of childhood essay. Like it feels weird that we're not emphasizing the reason you're single is the childhood trauma. Like, it feels weird that the center of this conversation is around her being single and not the essay. Am I crazy? Like, it feels like, why isn't the center of this series, I was essayed as a child? Because that makes a lot of sense for everything that's happening. You know what I mean? Or maybe maybe that's not true. Maybe it's just the fact that she's single. But how are you going to be single and not have this, you know what I mean? I don't know. Which one came first, the essay or the rejection? I don't know, but maybe she said at, at, in kindergarten she thought it was weird that people had crushes on people. Maybe that's her being asexual, aromantic, because I thought that was really normal. I remember being a little kid and thinking like, oh, yeah, like I know what romance is. I want romance because I was like, I want a best friend, like who's a person I kiss. I understood what that was. I watched Disney movies. So I'm trying to problem solve out loud here. Um, yeah, interesting. There's something here. <sighs> I don't think she's dealt with that trauma at all, Sarah says. Yeah, she she doesn't mention going to therapy herself. You notice that? I haven't heard her say, I've been to therapy and my therapist and I are working on this. And I'm kind of curious about that because I learned that Gen Z talks about therapy a lot but doesn't actually go to therapy. And even though she's not Gen Z, I wondered if she's doing the same thing as an older millennial. You know what I mean? And then she said she's tried, but she's gotten rejected every time she's tried. Is that because she's tried 40 times or one time? But also, no one's going to be able to get close to her. I don't think anyone could get close to her enough to actually go out with her. Like, this vibe is, it's uncomfortable, you know? I wonder, yeah, I wonder if it's more than, like, the essay. I wonder if there's, like, other things going on. Hmm. To be a desirable human, even though I haven't had that relationship and nobody's desired me romantically. And it's rough. It's hard. So if you're in that position, know that you're not alone. Know that it's difficult and know that I see you. Somebody sees you. Hmm. Okay, I know that I am not. As a 30 year old, I'd never date a man with no dating history. Massive red flag. My lack of dating history doesn't lessen my worth. She should she, she stop saying this. This is a problem. She has had dates. She's gone on plenty of first dates. She should stop. See, the narration is bad. She needs to stop saying she's never been in a relationship. She needs to say, oh, I've dated so many people. Haven't found the right person yet, though. See how that changes the narr narr Like, See how that changes it? Oh, I've been on so many dates, but gosh, I just haven't found my person. Versus I've never been in a relationship. Yeah, because you've been on a ton of first dates and no second dates. It's like one is sending a red flag and one is not sending a red flag. But she is the red flag, to be fair. She is sending the right flag. It, it is a red flag, though. Because, like, again, it's like the thing of why are you identifying as an incel or femcel? Just say you're single. 
because in their perspective, they're not just single. They have an internal experience they feel like they're going through. And I'm like, I would never call myself an incel or femcel. I would just say I'm single because my narration is like not prioritizing this relationship or sex, but everyone is. So that's the problem is like, why are you having this relationship with it? You know? Not the only one who has no dating history or just first dates dating history that has heard some kind of version of this that uh, lack of dating history it's because of the way you brand it it's because of the way you brand it it's the way you brand it lots of people i know have been in only one adult relationship and they say like i've dated plenty of people i dated one serious person but like eh, it didn't go anywhere or i've been on a ton of first dates but man i really don't like anybody out here that's the problem has she really ever liked anyone out here or she liked someone enough and it didn't go anywhere. Like, have you even met anybody you liked, girl? Be real with me. You think this girl has run into somebody she really liked and they didn't like her? If they're the love of your life, they're going to like you, bro. She hasn't met anybody who's liked her and she hasn't liked anyone. I'm telling you right now, I don't believe she's met anyone she's actually liked. As a person. I don't believe her. History is a massive red flag. Or I have been asked point blank by people I've been on first dates with, oh, you've never had a boyfriend? What's wrong with you? Okay, like I'm not out to change your mind. She's been essayed as a child. That's what's wrong with her. And it's impacting her social capabilities. It's impacting the way she sees herself. It's impacting a lot because there is something wrong with her. Trauma is real and it impacts your fucking life. And if you don't get it handled, it shows. So stop playing like there's nothing wrong, girl. Something horrible happened to you as a kid and it impacted you. Something is fucking wrong. That's what's wrong. You didn't fucking like, hello. And, and you can have your pain. That's totally fine. No hate towards you. And I don't want anybody else to send hate towards you. But for me personally, this brings up a good time to have a conversation, maybe more about the humanity that we all share in that we have good parts of ourselves. We have difficult parts of ourselves. And so whenever you get into a relationship with, relationship with somebody or you start dating somebody, there's going to be a variation of red flags beige flag her text says if someone doesn't want to date me because i lack history that's okay but i know my green flags outweigh that one red flag that one red flag is an indication of like 10 other red flags that's what she's not getting she's not getting that she doesn't understand there is a reason she's been single and she doesn't get that that's why people are like oh why have you been single in the same way if you've been promiscuous and you've been in a relationship since you were 15 and you've never been single and you're now 45 that's a red flag. What happened? It's all a red flag if the why doesn't make sense. So why is this happening? It's like she doesn't get it. Green flags. Something that I have done and tried to do in my life over the last few years is to change my judgment to curiosity. And so if you meet somebody who potentially doesn't have a dating history, I wonder what it would be like to get to understand them and to see them from that perspective of a curiosity about their life and their experience versus a judgment and just a, a overall glance of like, oh, no dating history, massive red flag moving on. Because like all people, I'm going to have a mixture of... Again, she's going to... See, I wish people would hear themselves when they talk. Oh, no dating history? She has a dating history. Why is she branding herself as somebody who has no dating history when she has a dating history? Like, why don't people hear themselves when they talk? Yeah, you... It would be... Sis... Of all things because we aren't just one small thing and it's more complex than just stating that that is a massive red flag in my in my opinion um because there's explanations as to why life has been like it is for me some of it is, is that it is just life and the shame that i feel and have felt in my past i don't want other people who have a lack of dating history to feel the way that i felt and they shouldn't because like, i'm sorry i keep forgetting she's mormon you're right sarah therapy and religion bubbles is so hard hard to navigate you're right I totally keep forgetting she's Mormon and that's got to be playing a role I'm sorry I keep because she's 40 you know and I keep forgetting she's Mormon of course she's probably struggling to find a therapist especially about childhood trauma and I and I want to know if that person is still in her life or if they're a church member or are they a relative like who was this person um 
So yeah, you're forgot. Yeah, I mean, you're the right. The point I will continue to come back to is that my worth as a human being has nothing to do with my dating history, but society, and then especially like the really strong religious faith that I grew up in made it seem as if people who had a spouse were better people mm -hmm. than people who were single. Whether people want to believe that or not, that's kind of just what the view of a society gives off. It's like, if you haven't had a- The Mormon society, see bubbles, right? spouse if you haven't had long-term relationships then there's something core wrong with you and i wholeheartedly disagree with that and i want anybody how could she disagree that's what i'm saying like the self-awareness is like very low right now and i love her so much but like obviously girl it girl haven't had long-term relationships then there's something core wrong with you and i wholeheartedly dis well long-term relationships are different i disagree too but there is something wrong with you so maybe there is something right about it mm. disagree with that and i want anybody who maybe hasn't had a lot of dating history to to try to separate yourself from that idea because that's not true so in my case um i haven't had a dating history because i went through pretty intense sexual trauma as a child that really destroyed a lot of my life that caused me to have um, an eating disorder a binge eating disorder gain a lot of weight i wasn't considered attractive i'm in a religious faith that the outward appearance is a big deal and so i couldn't even date within my community and i was only supposed to date people of my faith and so there's a lot of reasons why but None of them are about my character and um. mm. and who I am as a person. Mm. I know that. I well, hold up. Okay. Yes. Your trauma doesn't define you, but your trauma impacts how you see yourself and she has low self-worth. And so it is a part of the red flag because what people are saying when they say like, oh, that could be a red flag. Is they're saying like, OK, it sounds like you might take your trauma out on me or your trauma like might be an issue in our life or it sounds like. I think it is an indication of your character that you don't have a good relationship with yourself, not in a moralizing way, but in a healthy, unhealthy way, in sort of a dateable way. One of the requirements I personally had of a partner after I went to therapy and got stable was like, you have to know yourself enough not to make your problems my problems. And I just don't feel like she knows herself well enough not to make her problems my problems. Again, this has nothing to do with being a partner to people. But like if you have an eating disorder, you can't take it out on your partner. If you have an essay problem, you can't take it out on your partner. That's not fair to you or your partner. That's not to say you can't be triggered. It's not to say you can't be sad. It's not to say you can't be like, oh my God, I'm really hurting today. But you can't take it out on your partner. And a lot of the reasons people justify toxic relationships in the world is because they allow people to take their trauma out on each other and they consider it like, oh, this is so romantic. Look at you, the way you're abusing me because you were traumatized as a kid. But look at me. I love you so much. I'm going to take it. No. I don't care how traumatized you were as a kid. You can't put your shit on me, bro. But also, I'll be, I'll be your biggest cheerleader. I love you so much. You're the love of my life. I'll be there for you, right? So I feel like sometimes she's missing that, like, that reality. And maybe that's part of the healing journey for sure. Where no, you're right. Like your essay as a child, all of your trauma, that is, that is not a definition of your character. But the way you handle it as an adult and the way you're afraid to be a child now is a part of the fear. Look, if you want to be a person, like... I think it's beautiful when my partner is like childlike and I'm childlike because we're enjoying anime together. We're eating pizza at 3 a.m. and giggling with each other because like, oh, my God, we're so silly. We're allowing ourselves to be kids again. If she's afraid to be a kid because it reminds her of her essay, then she's going to miss out on a lot of bonding experiences with her partner. And a lot of partners are going to want to interact in maybe that capacity. Maybe not always. And then the question is if she got over or like learned to have a better relationship with her trauma, would she change as a person? Like something that stood out to me is the fact that she's afraid to act like a child or feel like a child because it makes her feel like she's back in her essay era. But the dilemma with that, of course, is like there's a lot of beauty to feeling like a child. What about going to Disneyland and enjoying yourself or giggling on a roller coaster like a kid and you can't stop or, 
You know what I mean? Like all of those, or you have a kid and you want to take that kid to the park and that kid's going to, you know, all of those things impact you. And if you can't be childlike because of your trauma, that's going to impact your kid. How are you going to get on the floor and play tag with your kid or play water balloons with your kid if you're afraid to be childlike? How are you going to draw with your kid and have an imagination? You know what I mean? This is how I think of these things impacting life. It's like if you don't figure this out, your kids aren't going to be able to connect with you because you're going to be too afraid to act like a kid because it's going to trigger your trauma. So again, she's probably not going to have kids. She's 40. And she's probably going to have to learn to be cool with that. And she sounds like she's kind of doing it already. But that's the way that I think it impacts things is like when you don't have a dating history, even though she does, and you're having all these problems, there's going to be some sort of like, you know, guys, don't say genital names in my chat. You guys are going to get me demonetized. De chat impacts the demonetization. I won't block you. Don't do that. Don't use don't use those words. I know you see them. It's fine. But like chat is so strict. All these people that are like, we're so sensitive as a society. We have to say grape. We do it because of ads. We're not doing it because we're sensitive. We literally want to get paid. <laughs> that I am not the only one that feels sad after family gatherings, but I feel like I am. Oh, this feeling I've heard from adults who are like, oh, my God, I always feel sad at family gatherings because I'm the only one without a partner. I don't know what that means, because like, obviously, how is that even possible? But also, OK. And then those people um, like who feel like, oh, my, our family relationships, like the get together relationships. They always get like um, coupled off, like all the couple couples go sit and all the single people sit. I don't know what that's about either. Rationally sad sometimes after extended family get togethers. I also didn't realize till this morning how wrinkly my shirt is, but whatever. Do people iron anymore? anymore? I remember ironing. Okay. So my brother is, was in town from Atlanta and we had a wonderful time together. I love his two little boys and his wife and, and everything. We had, we had family pictures. We had evenings where we got together this last week and it was a wonderful time. But it always leaves me immensely sad. And part of that is because I watched these people that I love deeply become units and leave in units. And I am one. I am still mm -hmm. me and I have never been a unit. And I think I'm sad uh, after family events for the same reason sometimes that I'm sad on weekends. The alone time, the spotlight on what other people consider family time, and I don't have a family or I don't have a person with me, makes me just more aware of my singleness than if I'm just going to work, everyday life, people are busy, or if I see my family on one-offs. And I guess I just wonder if other people feel that way, if you've been single for a long time, if there's this deep well of sadness that sometimes never gets filled. Um, and I think what I've been discovering lately as well is that given my trauma from the past and what I'm looking at now, it's like I don't know who I am outside of being what other people need me mm -hmm, to be. Mm -hmm. My family, my work, I, I've chosen a profession that's very much... Um, <coughs> little coughing attack sorry about that yikes uh i've chosen a profession that's very much like help focused and i realized that part of the reason as an eldest daughter in a latina family and a oh, mormon oh, family oh she a latina we have a latina i knew her mom was latina but i don't know why i didn't i thought okay she's latina wait how is she the only single person at the gathering she's got to have like 70 first cousins like me wait i knew her mom was latina i processed that Oh, she's a Mormon Latina. Wait, she should have the most family. There's no way she's the only single person at the gathering if she's Latina. Unless she's hanging out with her white side. Unless all, are both her parents Latina? Family. I have fulfilled a role that I love, that I that I have liked doing of like taking care of the people in my life and the people that I love. But I sometimes wonder if I wouldn't have had trauma and and if I would have been allowed internally to just figure out who I am without this desperate need to help others or to be there for my family, who I would be. Because I think sometimes this focus on... Uh, Go do it, girl. Go live your life, girl. Go figure it out. Go figure it out. Go figure it out. Go out on your own. Go figure it out, girl. You're 40 and you got a life. Go do it. The older sister, older daughter curse... But also go do it, girl. Go do it, girl. Don't wonder. Go do it. See how she's doing it? She's like, I wonder who I would have been. Go find out. 
go find out who you could still be because you're living in the present just like me. Go do it. Um, helping is maybe more of a distraction for having to be alone with my thoughts. Anyway, just some thoughts this morning uh, and I'm coming off of just feeling sad. And it's I think it's okay to feel sad. I think I also realize that there's a lot of strength in being somebody who's been single their entire life. Like I am a very independent individual. I am very strong. I can do things alone when a lot of other people can't. And I think that that has. Mm, see how we define independence differently? Mm, see how I define independence differently? Would I describe her as a very independent person or a very self-reliant person? See how we, interesting how words are defined differently. Would we describe her as very independent? Mm, very, very self-reliant. Like she's very capable. Is she independent though? Mm. Is, it has a, it's a blessing in some way, if that makes sense. So anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. Can I be honest? I'm scared. Why are you no longer actively dating? I'm scared of men. I'm scared of rejection. I am 40 years old and I have been, since I was 16, 17, trying to date, trying to seek out love off and on, not the entire time because it gets exhausting. The last time I was seriously dating, my ex-therapist created a dating profile for me. I was dating on my own profile, not the one he created. My therapist created one without my permission or knowledge because he thought I was bad at talking to men and gave them my phone number. Jesus. Use pictures from my Instagram and pretended to be me. So I'm a little hesitant about dating. I'm trying to gauge risk versus reward. The reward is potentially finding love, having experiences that I haven't had before. The risks are shitty men <laughs> and uh, difficult experiences and having to do small talk over and over again and just having to be confronted with my own insecurities as I'm seeking to express myself, find love, all that kind of stuff. Last year, I had a friend um, send me some information or kind of hook me up or try to hook me up with somebody from Amsterdam. She lives in Amsterdam. And this man, I realized just his fetish was larger bodies. And he would say stuff to me like, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, and we had never, we like, this is two days in. And he's telling me like, um, you can gain weight, but don't lose weight. And he was talking about my body and about how God put us together in like paths. And I was forcing myself to communicate with him because I thought, Ugh. okay, Mia, this is your only shot. No, you need to be aggressive and be like, nope, 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 nope. Tell these bitches to fucking fly, bitch. Be like, nah. No, no, no. See how she's like self-reliant. She's like independent in her own way. But you need to be independent in a way that says like, nah, do not bother me unless you are literally like the love of my life. Thank you so much. Like, nope, don't like you. Next. Oh, why don't you like me? Because I said so. Next. 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 You feel uncomfortable this whole time, but <sighs> <clears throat> give it a shot. Keep trying. Keep talking. The whole time, I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good about him. I didn't feel good about myself because... Maiden says having to be confronted with the, her insecurities is a good thing. She should ponder the desire to avoid that. She should want to face her insecurities so she doesn't have them anymore. Let's get rid of them and only keep the good ones, like reasonable ones. I felt this desperation. I continued to talk with him way past the point that I should have. Girl. And then lastly, I realized part of the abuse that I went through with my therapist was emotional abuse where he completely crossed so many boundaries emotionally mm -hmm. and treated me like his therapist, his confidant, his other person, woman, whatever you want to say, because he was married. What? Um, but it felt like uh, too intimate. And so the last time that I was intimate with somebody emotionally i have been destroyed like ultimately just completely destroyed and so i am terrified i'm really scared and i'm struggling with my mental health and so girl yes ma'am who is it uh ko says she's approaching dating from a scarcity mindset bro she's scarcity af bro she phew, i don't know if this girl knows what she believes but yeah that therapist needs to be reported i wonder if he came from the mormon church so more than anything, I'm afraid of men.
And I'm afraid of putting myself out there to be made fun of and rejected by men because that has been my entire life. So I don't know how to do it. I I don't know how to do it safely. And I don't know how to open my heart. She also has no street smarts. She's giving unreliable in terms of street smarts. Oh, yeah. That's another thing I don't find attractive about her is like she doesn't feel like she would be I couldn't trust her. If it, like if my leg got sawed off because a tree fell down and cut my leg open, like I feel like she wouldn't know what to do. And I feel like I need her to know what to do. You know what I mean? I feel like she doesn't have the street smarts, which is probably because she's in the Mormon bubble. You know, that's probably a part of it, too. Um, and let people in because I do know I have a lot to offer. So I don't know if anybody else is afraid and they've been able to figure out how to be unafraid. Uh, maybe let me know. I would. Re- you have to prove to yourself you're reliable. That's what I would do. If I was afraid of something, I would face that fear until I figured out how to have a realistic relationship with it. But more than that, like I've been having troubles leaving the house and I've been working on it by going to the store by myself. And then I'm like practicing it slowly. I just like my anxiety gets really insane for some reason. And so I've been working on it. I'm like, what the fuck am I afraid to go to the mall by myself? And I'm like, well, I'm in a foreign country. I don't speak the language. English is like "Eh, here. I'm probably just nervous for those reasons. So I've been practicing, but it's actually just like, ugh, it's one step at a time. It's exhausting emotionally. I get it, girl. Trust me. There's no rush. Figure it out when you figure it out, but don't complain. That's the problem is like she's complaining about it. She's like, it's not like I'm calling my sister up every week being like, oh, haven't left the house yet. It's like, nah, I, like I left the house. I went to the store. I like figured it out, but also like I'm not ready to go to the mall by myself, but I'll get there. It's like, I'm not even worried about it. Oh, hold on. I dropped frame. Dropped frame, dropped frame, my drop my frames. No, come back. Are we back? Are we back? Reconnection stabilized. Are we back? Are we back? Stabilization, jubilation. Okay, I think we're back. I think we're back. I think, okay, we're back. Okay. So, All I'm saying is like, I feel like she needs to like face herself, but also not rush herself. I feel like that's kind of like my whole thing. Like, like face your fear, but don't rush yourself, but also don't complain about it. Like this whole series on the internet. You know what I mean? Like this whole series on the internet, girl, people can see you. Really appreciate it. Okay, there's that song on TikTok right now, everybody's fallen in love and I'm falling behind. And I wanna talk about that um, because I feel that deeply. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say that. Your sound is cutting out. My sound, is it cutting out now after I've played her video? Is it cutting out? Hmm, everything looks fine. Dropped frame zero, 10,000. Okay, let me see, 2.8. Audio's cut off though. Is audio... Tell me when it's coming back. Tell me when it's coming back. Is it coming back right now? Is it still fucking up? Sounds like you're both. Refresh the page and come back. Like, let me see. How do I, how do every five seconds? Am I still cutting? Sound is fine for me. Okay, reset the stream. Did you guys restart? restart Okay, I'll restart her video. Hopefully it doesn't ruin our place in the video. Ugh, I hate when it does this. Hold on. It, like ruins the place in the video you have. Hold on. Which one were we on? Okay, there's that song on TikTok right now. Okay, sound is fine for some of you. Okay. Had to refresh my stream. Okay, re- yeah. Restarted my app. Audio fixed. Okay. I think YouTube's been having problems too. They've been posting my comments weird. It's been really strange. Okay, here's the new video. Everybody's fallen in love and I'm falling behind. And I want to talk about that um, because I feel that deeply. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say that um, there is no timetable and you're not behind anybody else. And um, I can agree with that, that there isn't a set timetable, but I also feel like that disregards the grief and the real loss that there is for people who have not had life experiences at the same time as their peers. As I've talked about before, I'm 41. I've never been in a serious relationship. I've dated only- 
She's had a birthday since we started the series. I've only done first dates, never had a boyfriend, all of those things. And um, any time that I would express that loneliness, I would always get back. Um, it's just not your time yet. Like, your time will come. Don't worry about it. There isn't a timetable. And again, I agree that that's real. But there is a real sense of otherness that comes from existing in a world and existing with your peers when you're not able to experience the same things that they're experiencing. I talked on here earlier about having a first kiss that I felt forced to do at 35 years old. There is loss at the idea that I had friends talking to me about kissing people 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I mean, I can go all the way on into your early 20s, having that relationship, developing a way to communicate or understanding how you should communicate in a relationship with a significant other. So like never having those experiences and living the entire time not having them creates a sense of worthlessness for me, just for me is what I'm saying, and a feeling like I am falling behind. There are things that I'm not able to experience and I'm not going to be able to get back. Like I won't get back my naive 16, 17 year old self who really wanted to have a boyfriend, who really wanted to fall in love. I won't get back my early 20s. And the I don't like this narrative of I won't get it back. I regret like that was the past. I wish I could relive like all these words are red flags to me. The ability to have um, that first relationship that goes south like so I did miss out I fell behind on certain milestones that were happening at the same time that they were happening for my peers so what I am trying to do now is to separate my worth like my value as a person um, from my relationship status and Good. understand Good. that I am worthy of love and I've talked about that before as well that we are worthy of love but it doesn't negate the sadness and the grief that I feel that I won't she repeats herself okay I, me too okay so to be fair I think being worthy of love is probably a part you have to ha have before you get past that you know into their actual reality which is like like most people are worthy of love, like even the worst of us. Like, I, I mean, I think everyone's worthy of love, so I don't think you're saying anything. Guys, I deeply believe every single person on this planet is worthy of love. Every rock, tree, and creature. So for Brittany, saying like you're worthy of love is like meaningless because like why isn't anyone worthy of love? Wouldn't everyone be worthy of love, even the worst of us? Even the worst person on the planet, why wouldn't they be worthy of love? Love, you don't get love because you were a good person. Love isn't given or shared with people because you are perfect. Love isn't about you performing well. Love isn't conditional. Love is only conditional if you're having a very specific relationship with love. To me, like love isn't about conditions. I don't love people conditionally. Even people I don't unconditionally, like I have these, I, I specify like, I mean, I love everyone. I feel like I love everyone because everyone is humanity and I'm humanity. But I have unconditional love, meaning very specifically, what that means is like, I will go out of my way for those people or I will integrate them into my life in more than just a casual way. But I feel like it's not saying much about yourself to say you're worthy of love, right? Isn't everybody worthy of love? Even in religion, everyone is worthy of God's love. So even in Mormonism, like maybe, I don't know, is Mormonism different? Can you guys tell me? Does God love you less? Like I was never taught as a Catholic that God would love me less. He loved Lucifer, his favorite angel, and he loved Judas, his best, his like his most, you know, infamous betrayer, right? So like in what is Mormon, does God love you conditionally in the Mormon bubble? Won't get certain things back. I won't be able to experience them at a younger age. I can, yes, have experiences now, but there's a lot of grief and loss that happens when you're watching everybody else around you um, experience things and you're never able to have that and you're able, never able to know what that feels like. So if that's you too, just know you're not alone. There's duality of feeling. I can feel like I've fallen behind and I can acknowledge the real grief and loss at having not experienced things when I wanted to and thought that I should and when other peers were doing that. At the same time that I can acknowledge there really isn't a timetable for all of these things. It just seems like there is because of um, the majority of people following a certain trajectory in life. And so I can still go and experience that. Um, maybe <laughs> if I can ever get the courage to date, but just know you're not alone. 
Sometimes being single for me really feels like when I was 10 years old and my aunt threw an August birthday party for my grandfather and two of my cousins, but didn't include me. Oh. Now, I loved my Aunt Norma and I don't really know why she did this. I was named after her. She's someone I looked up to. She took me shopping for um, my birthday every year. But that year in particular was very interesting because my grandfather was celebrating his birthday and we had two cousins that were going to be celebrating their birthdays as well towards the end of August. My birthday was beginning of August. Um, she was talking about this party where we were supposed to come have dinner and then cake. And she was telling my dad that it's to celebrate August birthdays. And I, being this little 10 year old, went up to her and was like, but Norma, like, what about my birthday? My birthday's in August too. And she said, oh, well, this is just for like the end of August because your birthday already passed. And it just goes to show like how impactful the things that we say and do with children. I am getting my period. Ooh. Bro, her aunt's a bitch. <laughs> Yo, her aunt's a bitch. I am getting my period. That shouldn't have made me cry. You told that 10 year old that she wasn't invited, bro. Her aunt's a bitch. Oh my God. Oh, I am getting my period. Oh, her aunt's a bitch. I can't believe she did that to a kid. You guys are so mean to kids, bro. Children are, and how it wouldn't have taken anything for her to just include me in that little celebration. But for some reason, she felt like it was super important yeah. not to. But that stuck with me as something that showed me that I was othered. I was outside looking in. And that's a thing that I've talked about before as I've thought about my singledom into yeah. my later years in life and never having anybody. I've spent my life feeling like I needed to earn people's love and earn people's respect and earn people's belief that I was good enough to be included. Damn. And so being single at this early age, never having had love, never found a boyfriend, never found anything, continues to like make that wound in me fester, that feeling of like, I'm not enough or I'm not worthy or I should. Yo, and you know when earlier she said her aunt's like a great woman? Her aunt's a bitch. Okay, that's a bitch thing to do to a kid, bro. Nah, Agent Butterfly says I would have changed my name. Yeah, fuck that bitch. Like, no, that attitude of like my aunt was a great woman. Your aunt bullied a 10 year old. Oh, my God. Is my audio out again? Oh, interesting. I'm having a hard time. Uh oh. Hmm. Why is my OBS fucking. My OBS be dropping, bro. Oh, oh my God. Who do, who do you think essayed her? No, her aunt didn't have a husband. Her aunt was single, bro. Oh my God, I'm dying here. Yeah, her family sounds traumatizing as fuck, bro. Okay, her, her family seems traumatizing as fuck. She needs to get away from her family. Can I be real with you? She needs to get away from her family. She's 40 years old. She needs to leave this community. They have not served her since she was a child. This community, okay, I'm so sorry. She was essayed in this community. She's never been around good people in this community. Her aunt be a bitch in this community. She needs to leave this community. Maiden says she needs to drop her inner healing. Poor thing, I feel for her. I hope she finds her healing and regains her power. Bro, she needs to skedaddle. She needs to ditch this whole bubble, bro. Her, her family sucks, okay? I want to know who essayed her and if that person is in prison or where they are. I don't like this. This woman has been bullied her whole life, bro. No wonder she stunted AF. No wonder she stunted AF, bro. This is so bad. I hate her. I hate her family. I hate her family. Shouldn't be included and that there's something wrong with me as to why people wouldn't include me, as to why people wouldn't date me, all of that. And then as I've gotten older and I've had brothers that have gotten married, I've had children, um, have been in relationships, and I've seen that dynamic of our family unit, the six of us, change. And me 
not changing and still kind of feeling like I'm a child in a lot of our family uh, relationships and then having to kind of always be on the outside asking to come over and can I open up Christmas presents with you and kind of inviting myself into family situations and gatherings and the awkwardness that I feel from that is a lot less than I used to feel I think for my for me in like my mid-20s to early 30s it was torturous to have to do that because I was being confronted with this like they have a unit and it's supposed to be that way and I'm glad that they do but like where do I fit because like I don't have a unit and yeah see this 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 is hard for me to process because again like that's why you get to be auntie the best part about being the single auntie is you would get invited to all the cool parties like in my family right like in my family being a single auntie or uncle is great like mark lives with my brother right now with my like farm brother and he gets to be with all the kids it's so fun or like auntie Brittany, they send me videos saying hi auntie Brittany," and i'm like hello and they go where's auntie Brittany?" and i'm not single now but like the idea that I wouldn't have a place in the family because I was single makes zero sense. Like, like the best role in the family is to be the fun single aunt or uncle because you can come over and you're like, what's up? I'm the, like, here's the, you know, do you guys think she's autistic? Is that the problem? So you think autistic and tra traumatized because she could be bros. Maybe she's neurodivergent and she's having a hard time understanding her place, but her place is with the family. That's what I'm saying. Like, my family is different, though. We did not emphasis, emphasize getting married. Catholicism has a single, um, like, there's a there's a calling to be single in Catholicism. So you actually don't have to get married. But it sounds like in Mormon bubble, you have to get married. So she's probably dealing with a different form of trauma. My form, like, that's different in my family. Completely different setup. Yeah, interesting. She doesn't give autism vibes, not going to lie. Yeah, I'm not really getting too much of autism vibes, but could be. I think it's more asexual, aromantic, a-something. I'm getting more a-something. And I'm getting Mormon bubble really fucked her up. I think the Mormon bubble might be a huge, huge part of this, right? Because I don't understand. She got shunned as a child. She's never found a place. They didn't celebrate her. You know what I mean? It sounds like she's never been celebrated in her life. That's hard. That's hard. Yeah. I think my family is a big celebrating family. We celebrate everyone's wins. Like my parents might not approve of my lifestyle, but they celebrate my wins. You know, they try to celebrate my wins to the best of their ability, you know? Hmm. And he says, I feel like this chat thinks way too many people are autistic who just aren't. Only is a good thing. We're just inviting them into the neurodivergent bubble. But also keep in mind our algorithms show us a lot of autism because like that's what my algorithm shows me. So I'm more than likely to show up on like a neurodivergent timeline and the content I review is more than likely to have neurodivergent. It's like this space. Everybody in this space is neurodivergent. ADHD, brain damage, like autism, like the personality disorders. Like there's so much neurodivergency in this space and nobody thinks it's interesting that there's a pattern. It's like, yeah, if you people in this community think everyone's neurodivergent because like there is a pattern. But we're also not diagnosing. We're diagnosing to invite. We're giving answers. OK. And I don't have any prospects that there's going to be a unit soon. So who am I? What am I? And as I thought about like ways I want to improve and that I want to be a better person and I'm going to get a freaking haircut because this is so annoying. Um, sorry. I've I was sad when she cut her hair, but good for her. It looked cute either way. I'm thinking about how grateful I am that, you know, I wouldn't want those experiences to ha have happened to me again. But I think that because I've had some of those experiences where I've been on the outside, I really am aware of inclusion and the importance of it. I also think, sorry, I have a, I know a guy who's in a similar situation where he really wants to get married and find a partner and he doesn't quite mesh with his family. I will say that he's probably the best of his family. So that's a little bit difficult. But when he visits, he definitely is aware he's the single guy in the family. But one of the things I wish I could say to him is like, I wish you knew how wonderful that was. But also if you're in a community where you're not celebrated and it sounds like his family struggles to celebrate his wins, it would be very hard. Because I think I think that's probably the problem is like you have to have a family that celebrates your wins because otherwise there's a lot of jealousy and then you're jealous and then you're bitter about other people getting success because you didn't have it. I will say one of the things that I would recommend for everybody is to remember to celebrate people's wins because it really goes a long way and it helps you as well. Um, be happy for people's happy. Be happy for people's happy. They're real happy. Don't be fake happy for people. 
And don't be fake happy for people's unhappy either. I want to be I want to be real happy for your real happy, you know? And I seek to be as inclusive as I can with my nephews, with my family, with my brothers, with my friends at work, because inclusion is so crucial to connection. And when we feel ostracized, then that permeates that loneliness. Whereas when I can feel like included and I seek to include others, then the grief and the pain of that isn't as large. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I think there's a huge misconception that if somebody's been single their entire life or been single a lot of their life, that it's just because they don't put themselves out there. I think in a lot of cases, that's just not true in quite a lot of cases. And I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for my... Putting yourself out there does not mean going on dates. Do we agree? Putting yourself out there does not mean going on dates. It means opening up and being vulnerable and putting yourself out there and yourself, not going on dates. That's not what that means. It could mean that, but usually when people say put yourself out there, they're not just saying go on a date. They're saying actually like put yourself out there. And most people don't do that. Most people go on dates without putting themselves out there. But also, even if you put yourself out there authentically, it doesn't mean you're going to run into the love of your life myself that the idea that because I'm not single it's because I haven't put myself out there is just inherently false I think if any so then she hasn't been single her whole life because if she's been on dates like you can be single your whole life and have a dating history right so it's that's why she's confusing people she said she hasn't dated anybody but now she's put herself out there you have to say I've gone on plenty of dates I've put myself out there I'm still not running into my person you know getting into a relationship is only good if it ends up being the love of your life. Otherwise, it's just like something that you're going to, like the universe is going to teach you about yourself. It's a life lesson, girl. Haven't you seen that Instagram post? Is this the love of my life or is this a life lesson? It's probably a life lesson. <coughs> and another way to get a life lesson is to be single. Thing, as I've seen other people in my life be in relationships and go from like relationship to relationship or get in a relationship really young, get married to that person, you know, all that stuff. I think I've had to put myself out there so much more than people that have been in relationships. Like I've had to practice the dating scene for a lot longer because I've been Ooh. single a lot longer. That's interesting. Then you need to rebrand yourself. Stop saying You've never dated somebody. It's you're, she's her marketing is bad. Her marketing is bad. And then I have this weird caveat that I grew up LDS, grew up Mormon, and so being married and getting married is such a huge part of that that they even have entire congregations where you meet every Sunday of activities during the week where your entire congregation is single. And they do that and they say that so that you can have peers of your same age, oh. you know, um, studying the gospel of Christ. But in reality, I think we know what's happening. Can we take a guess? She's not Mormon. She's been dating in the wrong bubble. Her person isn't here. There's no way her person is Mormon. Right? There's millions of people she could be compatible with, but they're not Mormon. I'm telling you, it's not that. Right? That's got to be what it is. She's been looking in the Mormon bubble, and the person she's looking for isn't Mormon. Mm-hmm. I called it. I'm calling it right now. That's what I'm deciding. Reality, it's so that you can get married because that's such a huge deal in the Mormon faith. So let me just mention some of the ways I've put myself out there, okay? Um, I've asked people out on dates and been rejected. I've gone on very first dates. I've gone on blind dates. For about 10 years, I was doing online dating right when it started, and it wasn't seen as something that you wanted to say you ever did. Now it's way more socially acceptable, but I started kind of at the early stage of online dating. I did a lot of first dates from there. I was in that congregation that was specifically designed for single people having single activities. I've done fast dating I've done like I said blind dates like the idea that I haven't put myself out there is Conrad with a super chat thank you so much says she thinks she is Mormon but she needs more men am I right ladies she said that she's been having like a path like a relationship with her religion as well so I think she is going on dates but she's dating a Mormon person I think in her heart of hearts she knows she doesn't believe in it and I think that's probably the reason because she said she's on a faith journey as well Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, didn't I tell Kidology this? Didn't I tell Kidology this? You keep going on dates and putting yourself out there because I thought she wasn't, but that's because you keep trying to meet people and not your person. You got to think 
of you meeting your person, your person, your person, okay, is not people. So you go out and meet people to learn more about yourself, to become the person who's going to bond with your person. Okay. I'm telling you. It's not true. And it hurts because, and maybe not hurts, maybe it just is frustrating that people don't understand this part of it, is that I don't know. I don't know why none of those things stuck for me. I think there are guesses and I can I can see where where maybe there's some reasons why I'm not in a relationship. And I think that there's going to be lots of single people that relate to this. The idea that you're chronically having to do those frustrating things to try to meet people, those online dating and the get to know you questions and all that stuff and going to an event, going to an activity, going to a dance, going somewhere and having to feel awkward inside put yourself out there, not have any luck from it. It gets exhausting, exhausting. So in reality, I haven't done anything new in the dating world for probably four to five years, I would say, because I'm just tired. At some point I just was like, you know, I can't do this anymore. Like I am exhausted from trying to meet somebody. I'll just deal with the loneliness. So that's just me. Honestly, there could be other reasons for people why they haven't been in a relationship. And one of them might be that they haven't put themselves out there. But there's this whole other thing as to maybe why they haven't been able to do that. But I know that a lot of people have and a lot of people do for a very long time. And at some point, it just gets exhausting. And I don't know. I don't know why it's so easy for some people. I don't know why you meet your high school boyfriend and you get married and that's great. Because they fit into the bubble. Because they fit into the bubble. That's it. It's one of the people you're going to bond with. You fit into the bubble. That's not everyone's story, bro. People were telling me, like, don't you think it's a red flag that you're single at 33? And I was like, don't you think it's a red flag that your mom was at my house last night? It's only a red flag if you're there for the wrong reason. And I was there for a very purposeful reason. And did it not work, ladies? Did I not find the love of my life? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Okay. Or you meet somebody, you know, after a few difficult <sighs> relationships and then that's somebody or you meet somebody have a horrible experience like relationships are just so broad and there isn't one experience. And so I'm not trying to speak to all experiences. I'm just trying to get a little insight into what I deal with. So anyway, just thought I'd share that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lisa, can I just say? Mm. Super cute. But I think this particular haircut just aged her by like 20 years. She looks like a really sexy 60-year-old. She's so cute. I love her hair color. Yeah. Say your feelings are valid. I just want you to hear that first off. Your feelings of va are valid. Watching people you love... I'm sorry. Hold on. She didn't even read the question out loud. So now it's confusing. Do you have any tips? I feel so, so ashamed navigating emotions and never being in love and watching friends in love. Lisa, can I just say your feelings are about First, you have to be happy for people's happy, bros. You have got to learn to be happy for people's happy. Genuinely happy for people's happy. Envy and jealousy. Okay. Especially envy. Useless. How can you justify wanting what someone else has? Why do you, why do you want what someone else has? Should you want what you want when you have? Don't, I don't believe in this from a philosophy perspective. Envy is like a useless tool to me. Like it's, I couldn't, and it's not helpful. Jealousy is kind of an emotional thing and it happens. Like it's a fear-based thing. Like I'm afraid to lose this thing I have. But wanting what other people have, I don't want what you have, girl. I want what I want, which is different than what you have. What I want is the model. Like I'll look at my parents and say, okay, I want this type of relationship, but I don't want this relationship, Right? People say, oh, I want this. And I'm like, no, you don't. You want the thing that's for you. Oh, I wish I had that car. No, you don't. You wish you had a car similar to this car. We don't want what other people have because that's crazy. What we want is the idea of what other people have, which is specific to us. And then we have to ask ourselves why we want it. Valid. 
I just want you to hear that first off. Your feelings of that are valid. Watching people you love, having your relationships with them change as they get into relationships and you don't is a difficult experience. And it's an experience we don't talk about very often. So I just want you to know that. The feelings of I'm happy for them and I'm sad for me and I'm lonely and the relationship changes, all of those things are completely valid. And me saying that doesn't make it any less hard to deal with. Um, and the tips that I might have might not be helpful, but I can just share what I've done to make it a little bit easier for myself. And the first thing is that I wish I would have had more compassion for myself. Mm -hmm. And I hope you can have some compassion for yourself mm -hmm. and understand that we don't feel feelings like happiness and then happiness is over and now we feel sadness, sadness is over and now we feel jealousy. Like that's not how feelings work, but sometimes I think that's how our brain tries to trick us into thinking that they work. So if I'm feeling like happy, sad, confused, jealous, angry, embarrassed, my brain's like, oh, something's wrong with you. So I just wanna say that like there's nothing wrong with you to have that mixture of emotion when you're going through any experience. When I was about 27 or 28, I had a really good friend. I was living with them at the time. We were roommates, we were great friends. And and she was getting married and she had gone through a breakup and it had been difficult. She'd found somebody else and she'd kind of jumped into a relationship and I was so happy for her. And at the same time, I was like, why not me? What is it that keeps me not having those experiences? And I judged myself for having that mixture of emotion and I was pretty cruel to myself. And so I think the first thing I would say is like, understand that while we might not like the feeling of jealousy or we might not like the feeling of sadness that we have, like if we can just like honor that a little bit and just say like, wow, it's understandable that you feel this way and talk to yourself in a more kind way, then I think it's easier to navigate the feelings because what happens when we talk to ourselves with unkindness, and I know this sounds cheesy and I know it's hard to Oh, Maiden says, you know, she has similar uh, smexual energy to Pearl. She does remind me of Pearl Davis. Yeah, aka none. Maiden. But yes, yeah, she has like no, it's like no, none of the smexual energy. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Was she in love with the friend? I don't think, I think she's using jealousy like people use it, like envy. She, I don't think she was jealous of her friend. Like she was afraid to lose her friend to the love of her life. A lot of, some of my friends have talked about this. My friends who are in the category of wanting to be in a relationship, but can't, are like desperate about it. They said that they don't like being the friend that like isn't unmarried and everyone else is married and they feel like everyone changes their relationship with them after they're married and they feel kind of abandoned. But I actually don't believe them. Like, I, I think they think that, but I don't think that's the truth. I don't. I think when you're happy for people's happy, you're not upset when relationships change. I think you're only really like you're only upset when relationships change because you don't know how to be happy for people's happy. Like for me personally, I see us on all as people on adventure. So this is how my brain works. OK, we're all on adventures and we're all in our own stories. And in those stories, we come across other people's stories. But I am not in control of your story. My story cannot change or control your story unless I'm forcing it to. And then you're like, we are having a battle. So when my friend and I were like in journeys and we're crossing each other's paths, it's really cool. But I'm not here to stop my friend on her journey. And she's not here to stop me on mine. But the reason I want to be happy for people's happy is to be like, oh, that's how their movie's going. We're all the main characters in our own movies. And so to ask your friends to deviate their main story to have a relationship with you feels weird to me. Like you're in your own story and I'm in my story. And so this idea of like, oh, I'm going to build a life with my friend. If that's your story and you're both the main character and that's how you're doing it, fine. But like my partner and I are the main characters in our shared story. And then we're still the main characters in our individual story. And our paths are combining in a particular way. But I don't want to do that with anyone else. So I want to honor the way I feel about people's stories. That's why One Piece really sings to my soul. Because One Piece is a bunch of very individualistic people having their own stories that happen to overlap right now, but no one is building their goals or dreams around each other. Like Luffy's dream to be king of the pirates is, well, if that's his dream, allegedly he actually has a bigger dream. No spoilers in the chat. Okay. But Luffy's dream doesn't imp impede on Zoro's dream and Zoro's dream doesn't impede on Nami's dream. And for right now, their story is together. 
But like we've seen in the series, they have moments where their stories aren't together in the same capacity, right? Sanji has his own dreams. Usopp has his own dreams. And so this narrative we have of like, oh my gosh, my friend fell in love and that makes me feel sad. Sure. But also kind of weird, like kind of a red flag to me. Like, why are you sad your friend fell in love? Why are you sad that your friend's in her like hustle era? Why are you sad that your friend is like working late at the office because he wants to buy his kids like a special toy and it's going to cost a lot of money? Like, why are you sad that people are out here living their dreams? And it's because you're not living yours. Be the main character in your life. You have to be the main character in your life and decide what do I want to do with my life regardless of what everyone else is doing. Now, to be fair to this girl, and I don't mean to speak for her, we're just using her life to have a good conversation. She did explain why she's having that trouble. Childhood trauma, big deal. Very Mormon family, big deal. Oldest sister or daughter in a Latina family, big deal. She hasn't learned to have her own dreams. She hasn't learned to have her own dreams, you know? Conrad says, I think it feels bad that your friend can't spend as much time with you. I think that's being a bad friend. I think being a bad friend is being upset your friend who's living a life can't spend more time with you. When really it should be, you should be so grateful for the time you do spend, you don't take it for granted. And also this is a time for you to learn that lesson of what am I really doing with my life? Because it certainly isn't building one with my friends. Like, how can you build your life? Like again, if you're building your life with your friends, okay, hold on. Okay, even today, this morning, I messaged one of my besties and she was like, we need to do a catch up. I have to tell you things. And I was like, perfect. And we haven't spoken in about, I don't know, a month or so. And we send each other Marco Polo. So that's how we stay in contact. But we are both, both very, very, very busy people. And so she was like, hey, let's do a catch up. And that's us saying, okay, let's do a catch up. And when we do a catch up, it's like we call for like an hour or two. We catch up. We tell each other everything that's going on. And we go, okay, love you. Bye. And then we go back to doing our adventure because right now we're like hyper-focused in our careers. Like she's right in the middle of her like career moment. I'm right in the middle of mine, right? So we're busy, but we also miss each other. But we also know that our friendship is so good that it's okay if we don't talk for six months. Or even one of my other besties, I haven't talked to her in like since December. But we just message. I'm like, hey girl, like just a reminder. I know you're alive. Like I love you. Here's a picture of my cat. I'll talk to you soon. It's like life doesn't take you in that way. And if you're sad, your friend doesn't have time for you. I feel like you're not being honest with why you're sad because it is, is it your friend doesn't have time for you or your friend doesn't even have time for anything right now because most of the time when my friends are busy, they don't have time for anything except what's happening in the town they live in, right? So if my friend had more time for me and I had more time for her, we would make that time. We just don't have it right now. So it's more like celebrating her win because she's so busy with work. That means she's killing it. She's celebrating my win because I'm killing it at work, right? Like the stream, guys. Work is going so well for me, right? That we're celebrating each other's wins, but it means we can't spend as much time together. It's not about each other. It's about recognizing my friend is in a winning moment. How can I, how can I ask for her attention when she's fucking killing it right now? Why would I ask her to sacrifice her career for a friend? Because you guys remember, okay, morals come first. So let's say you're God, okay, your spouse your job, your kids, however you're going to do it, your kids, maybe, no, no, your kids always. What am I talking about? So with me, it's, with me, it's my partnership. Okay. My job, my family. Okay. If my kids were here, they'd be my, my partner, my kids, obviously, but my job, okay. Comes after my partner, but you know, if my family needs me, my family would never ask me to sacrifice my job for them though. See, that's important too. There's so much here I want to talk about. I could ramble for 20 hours. You got to pay attention to what people are asking you to sacrifice. I would never, if my mom was sick, I would go to her. I wouldn't sacrifice time with my mom for my job. But my mom wouldn't ask me to sacrifice time with my job to spend time on the phone with her talking about nothing. Right? So it's like, again, it's about your priorities. Okay? It's all about your priorities. Like, I have to prioritize my marriage and then my job because that's our livelihood and then my friends and then my friends and family, right? Like, I have to prioritize those things. But obviously, like, in an emergency, those things get switched around. Does that make sense? All I'm trying to say is, if your friend is busy, okay, this is a time for you to celebrate them, not make it about you, you selfish bitch. Hard to do, but literally, it just makes things worse. Like, it just spirals the circle. 
And then after like being kind to yourself, I think the other thing is potentially if you feel comfortable expressing and having communication with that friend or that person um, and talking about your relationship, talking about like what your expectations are, what their expectations are for what your relationship looks like. If that's something you want to keep in your life, talking about like what you're afraid of, um, afraid of losing because this dynamic is changing. And sometimes those conversations go well and sometimes they don't. And I think you are the only one that can. Sorry, Rachel says, I think she craves someone to care about her, not necessarily a boyfriend. Okay, but can I say this? I've known people in the same situation who have had boyfriends, who have been married, who've been in relationships. You know, it feels like if these people don't have a good relationship with themselves, it doesn't matter if they do have a boyfriend or a best friend or people that are into them because they're always going to feel lonely. If you feel lonely when you're by yourself, no one is going to is going to fill that void. No one is going to fill that void. No one. If you feel lonely when you are alone, no one is going to fill that void. I just don't believe it personally. Judge what you need to do in that moment. But I think sometimes we aren't as honest with the people in our lives that love us and that we love. And sometimes if we were honest and saying, this is how I'm feeling, then maybe that person doesn't realize and they can try to help meet that need. And then the third thing for me too is finding relationships where people are on the same stage of life that I am. So having friendships or even communicating online with people like this community has been really helpful for me of other people who know what it feels like to not have found love yet. I feel like I can relate to them and it doesn't heal everything or change everything, but I think it helps me understand that I'm not alone and there's nothing wrong with me and I'm worthy and deserving of all the things that I seek and that there are people that are going to understand me. And so, I don't know, those are just a couple things, but I just want you to know that you're amazing and I hope that you can find peace and comfort in whatever and wherever your journey takes you. And that's all. Hi friends, it's been a few weeks. Can I just tell you, I'm really tired of doing life alone. And I bet there are so many people who relate to that because it is not for the week. It is a lot. So a couple weeks ago, charges were filed against the person who abused me for years. And oh. I had wanted that to happen. I'd been hoping that would happen for quite a while. But having that happen and now all the things that are going to come have been some of the hardest moments I think I've ever faced in my life. And I've had amazing friends who I adore and love and family who have been there for me. But there is something different about not having like a person, like a person with you, right next to you, the one that can see those vulnerable moments when you're completely undone. And again, not that friends probably couldn't, but it just highlights this like loss that I feel about not having that in my life. And I always. Okay, will someone explain this to me, please. I'm really trying to understand, but I can't get it. I, I just can't get it. First of all, shout out to her finally getting the charges going and stuff. That stuff is so hard and complicated. But what does having a partner have to do with anything? Maybe I just feel good enough. I feel very close to my family. I feel like, like, what does this have to do with a partner? Like, can someone please explain it? I just don't get it. I'm trying to get it. Like, I, I just don't see what that would change unless she literally can't be like, what does this have to be? What kind of vulnerability does she need to show that she can't show her mom or a friend that only a partner could see? You know what I mean? I'm sad for her, but get a dog. She doesn't like animals, so she can't get a dog. But you know what I mean? Like, what is it? Because in my head, if this is about essay and this is about my childhood, I feel like my mom would be the perfect person unless my mom did it. She would be the person I would go to about this. I feel like I cry to my parents. I go to my parents. When I have problems, I cry to my parents. And then, of course, now I cry to my partner. But I'm just trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? What vulnerability does she want to show? But she can't show. Maybe she can't hug her family. I hug her. I hug my family. I cry to my family. My siblings hold me while I cry for sure. Hmm. 
always feel like I have to put the disclaimer out there of like, I know that there are people in situations or relationships that they don't have that personal support there. I get that. I understand that. I'm not talking about that because I know that there are also relationships where there is support and there is love. And um, so I'm, I'm not like, I always have to put that disclaimer out there, which sometimes gets a little frustrating because I think like, I get there's a million different ways that our life experiences can go. There's a million different things. But what I am talking about is existing in a world and in a space in which you have done life all by yourself, all the time. And it gets really exhausting to not ever have had just somebody you could lean on for a few moments to handle existing with you because it's so hard and it's getting harder. Now, I won't be able to talk much about the case, but I do want to talk about my emotions as I go through it. So I'm sorry I won't be able to provide details and things like that. But I, you know, as I handle this, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. Guys, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. All I wanted to say is, hi, I've been gone for a little while and I'm sorry. Discord said, I think she wants someone to maybe help her with the life stuff, like chores when going through a bad time like it is the day-to-day living she feels she needs support with like couldn't she get that from a friend i mean hire a nanny i mean not a nanny hire a housekeeper i guess hmm i don't know or maybe because she's never been in a relationship she has like this disney fantasy around it and thinks it will like be everything but i don't know again if i can't understand if you have a supportive family why would you need a partner but then it like that's the part like she has friends but like why isn't that enough? I just don't know what a supportive partner would give you that supportive friends and family can't unless you already know the love of your life. Like if you don't have the love of your life, like what are you sharing to your partner? I mean, that makes sense. But also I just like I'm good keeping some things personal. Uh, I trust myself to to help myself. Uh, maybe that's the difference. Okay. In her defense, I do have an insane amount of confidence in myself and I know how to comfort myself so I don't need my family and friends to fill that void that they can't fill and I think she doesn't know how to fill her own void and she thinks if I had a partner they would fill it yeah I couldn't imagine waiting around for a partner to fill that void maybe I'm trying to think like what could it be maybe it's that you know what I mean hiring a housekeeper is not like having someone who cares about you doing it for you I don't want my I don't want to bother my friends and family to clean my house hiring a housekeeper is caring for yourself you know what I mean? Like hiring a housekeeper is saying I'm adult enough to care for myself. You know what I mean? I don't know. There's something weird about this that I don't understand. I mean, I get it, but I also don't get it. Sorry. Um, I've just been really struggling and not knowing what to say or how to say it and wanting like the support that I've had from this community, but then being like, I, I can't say stuff. I can't talk about things. Oh. And so it's been really just. Well, then you don't need a partner. Cause what if your partner isn't open to hearing those things? You need a therapist. Oh, but she wants to be vulnerable and be open. She has bad friends, not bad friends. She has friends who can't see her vulnerability. Okay. Okay. She just said it. She said, there is things I can't talk about. So she's thinking if I had a partner, I could tell them everything. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, actually. It's something I'm trying to navigate, but... But you might never find that, so you got to learn how to tell it to yourself, girl. I just... Um, <gasps> or like an anonymous support system. Life is hard, and I am sending love to anybody who is getting up every day and still functioning and pushing and going forward because it is really, really difficult to do that. So yeah. yeah, Fishy, you're right. I think she wants to be seen. I agree with you. I think she's like desperate to be seen. Now, remember, your friends aren't going to see all of you. So be grateful for what they can see. And I can understand the desire to be seen fully 100%. I just don't think it's necessary for joy. But it could be necessary if you aren't ready to go on your joy journey. She's probably just not ready to go on the joy journey. My love. This is a tricky one. How do I act when they talk about their relationships? I don't want to hear about it because I'm jealous, but I also don't want to be a bad friend. Um, envious, right? Like they're envious. Yeah, you need to learn how to be happy for other people's happy. I think you need therapy or like philosophy, probably philosophy. Yeah, could you imagine? Like, again, guys, it's okay to feel. Again, this goes back to morals and philosophy. Not being able to be happy for other people's happiness 
is about you. So you need to fix something or have a relationship with yourself that's deeper and more profound. Because being so envious that your friend is in a relationship that you don't want to hear them being happy about being in love. I'm sorry, but like, do you really want to be that miserable? That sounds like misery. I'm not a miserable person, so I don't know what you're going through, girl. But like, that sounds like misery to me. Like, celebrate your friend's wins. Celebrate the people in your life, you know? I couldn't imagine it, but that's okay if you're there in that stage, but know that something's wrong. How about that? It's totally understandable that you're at that stage. Do you know that something is wrong? And if you do know something is wrong, because I know you want to be a good friend, according to this questionnaire, then do you know how to fix it? Philosophy, right? And maybe some therapy, but philosophy, what is the meaning of being happy? What is the meaning of understanding people's lives? What is the meaning of your own life? You know? It really is. Um, When other people are talking about their relationships, their life, their experience, and it triggers something in you, whether it's jealousy or sadness or grief, and you want to be there for them, but you don't know how to do that when you're feeling all those other things, it can be really hard. And I think most of us want to be a good friend, and so we kind of push our feelings aside and push those things about us aside. But then we have this internal monologue of judging the fact that we had those feelings or struggling with whatever our friend is telling us, or especially when it comes to relationships, and especially if it's something where this person is experiencing something that you in the moment aren't having and wish you could have. So there's a couple things that I do that help me. One of them is deciding, is this a moment where I can tell, or is this a person that I can tell, hey, I love you. I'm like going through some stuff right now and it's really hard for me to hear about love and relationships. Or I love you, I'm in a weird space, can I call you back? Or um, can we just change the subject for a little bit and we can get back to relationships in a little while? Like if it's impacting that me that much, then I will do that. Um, There are other times and other places where you really can't just like jump in like that. And so in my mind, I'm trying to focus on like the person. I'm trying to tell myself how much I love them. I'm trying to focus on how much I value and I'm grateful for the joys that they're sharing with me. And that I try to say, hey, Mia, right now it's not about you. Focus on them and express the love and support that you do truly feel. But then I think I do like the work on the back end to figure out why I'm so jealous and to figure out how to like work with that emotion so that I don't carry that into other areas of my life. Not that you can't have those experiences and those emotions and jealousy is a real part of life and we often don't talk about it because it's one of those bad feelings, right? So I grew up in a really high demand Christian religion and this is relevant because what I attributed to any emotion, thought or experience that I was going through, it like went into two categories, good or bad. Good meaning I'm like Jesus and I'm, I'm, I'm a good person. Bad meaning like I'm bad, I'm gonna go to hell and this is wrong. And it was very black and white for me. And so anytime I had emotions that were like jealousy, anger, um, anything I would perceive as negative or I was judging other people, I would instantly ignore that and be like, oh my gosh, that means I'm bad. And I would like, I would try to get away from those emotions instead of like analyzing like, why am I experiencing this? What is it trying to tell me about maybe a need that I'm not um, having fulfilled? And that has really shifted things for me. So letting some of that go and realizing that like good or bad isn't attached to feelings or, or thoughts even, that they're just there to teach me something about me and myself and my experience. I've been able to question them more. And so when I have a lot of jealousy, I will spend time thinking about like what is driving this jealousy and a lot of times it's something like I feel lonely or I'd, like, I'd ask myself the question like why are you jealous of this person? Well, I don't think they deserve to have blah 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 blah. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's intense. You Okay, I don't think that's your call to decide what somebody else deserves but like it tells me that information, right? Or it's like why are you jealous of this person? It's like uh, the answer to that being like I'm lonely. Why are you lonely? Because I've like not had a romantic partner and I really wanted that in my life. No, you're not lonely because you haven't had a romantic partner. That's not what loneliness comes from. Okay. No, Mm, maybe it depends on what version of loneliness. Okay. That's what I was waiting for. Loneliness does not come from not having a relationship. Loneliness comes from not having a relationship with yourself and not understanding your, your place in the universe and what you're doing here and what it means to be alive. Right. 
And then then there's the casual, I feel like, oh, I feel kind of like I'm alone or lonely, like in a normal, casual way. But like deep, deep loneliness, that feeling I felt so deeply, that was a relationship I was having with myself in my opinion. In my opinion, I think that does not come from other people. I think the loneliness of community and everything is a different kind of loneliness that's important. But I think the loneliness she is feeling is coming from deep inside of her and is not going to be fixed by a partner. I think for all the people that are in this category that I see who are deeply, deeply lonely and they keep thinking, if I just find a partner, if I just find a partner, I just don't think your partner is going to fix it. And I think your partner that is the one who's compatible with you needs you to figure out your shit so like you can get over that so you can meet that person because I just don't think it's healthy. I think it's such a deep hole in a person and you're willing to probably settle so you don't actually have to like face a part of yourself. But think of the kind of partner that would be with you when you don't even like yourself. Like you don't have a deep relationship with your consciousness. Who's that person? Who's the person who's willing to date a person who doesn't know who they are? Okay, um, what does that teach you about yourself? What makes me feel unworthy? It makes me feel like I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy of those type of things. And so questioning my emotions instead of just labeling them good or bad and being freaked out about them if they were bad to try to get them away has helped me be more emotionally sound so that when I'm with friendships, when I'm with family, I have less trick. Like they can't, be, they can't even be happy, happy for their friends. Can you imagine? Okay, you're on a date with a person. And they're like a really go lucky, happy person. They're like, hi, how are you? They're like, oh my gosh, my buddy just got engaged. I'm so happy for him. And then you're like, oh, my girlfriend just got married. It's hard to be happy for her. Do you want to marry the guy who's like, oh my God, my buddy just got engaged. I'm fucking stoked for him, bro. Or do you want to marry the guy that's like, oh, my friend just got married. When's it going to be my turn? Like, who do you want to date, bro? Who wants to date the bitter bitch? Whether it's a boy or a girl. When I hear that bitterness in people, I'm like, mm -mm, I want you to be happy for people's happy because like I don't want to marry somebody that isn't happy for their friends. Like and I mean this and then I, again, I understand if you're not happy for your friend because they just did heroin for eighth time and like they think it's making them happy, but you don't think it's making them happy. I get that. But if your friend is genuinely, genuinely happy and they're celebrating a win and you're not celebrating a win with them. It feels weird. It feels weird to me. Like I wouldn't want to date a person. And that's what I'm saying. That's the red flag I see in people that are still like kind of getting over trauma and working on themselves. They have a really hard time being happy for people. And it's like, like, do you want to date a person that has a hard time being happy for people? And then you become self-pitying and you make it about yourself when they're talking about their experiences and their emotions and I realize like in the end that like I can balance those mixed feelings and I can figure out what I need because it's okay to experience some of those things so wow this was long sorry all right let's do an algorithm reset and talk about uh, loneliness this time of year, especially if you're single or have been single for a this long time. This is December. I am in my early 40s. I've never been uh, married, in a relationship, any of that. So the holiday seasons, seasons, season, are always a hard time, I think, for lots of people, regardless of your relationship status. But I feel like those of us who are single and have been single for a long time can sometimes find the loneliness to be pretty heavy. And I feel like I've seen that a lot in my life. Um, because the focus a lot of the times is around family and get together and then when you're getting together with family there is that disconnection that at least I feel sometimes when um, my brothers and their wives and their children are together and I'm just me that has always been difficult so last night um, and just sharing because it's a normal part of life and I think yeah somebody explained that phenomenon to me I've never felt that way I've never felt weird seeing my friends and family and partnerships with kids it's just cool like we're all friends what does it matter can someone explain that to me because I don't get that at all I don't understand why that matters sometimes we don't talk about this but last night I had a friend post or an acquaintance post on Instagram that they were getting married they were proposed to they had been similar to my situation where um they hadn't been in a relationship or hadn't dated 
I feel like if your friends are afraid to tell you they've gotten engaged, that's a problem. You know? very much um, and they're now getting married and she posted about it and we haven't talked for a few years you know how you just have Instagram friends that you haven't talked to in a long time kind of like Facebook friends I guess um, but anyway she posted that she was getting married and I had feelings about it it was really difficult for me now what was hard is that I know what it's like to be alone and I know that that's what she has wanted is that connection and that relationship and all of that. So a large part of me was happy for her um, and I still am happy for her. And then there's this part of me that had a hard time liking it because I felt jealous, like I felt sad and I felt like another person that I was single with is now no longer single and I feel even more alone on the outside looking in on life. And I just want to say it's okay to have those feelings. I think I'm embarrassed by them sometimes or I feel ashamed or I was mad at myself when I had that feeling of like, Mia, get over yourself, like be happy for somebody. And I think I am happy for her. I really am, especially because as I wrap my head around it, I know what it's like to be alone. And I think, yes, like, I'm so glad for you. You look so happy. Um, and you don't know what an individual person's relationship is like. And there are difficulties and problems with all relationships, no matter if it's romantic or not. But regardless, I do feel happy for her and the happiness that I can see in her face and in his and the relationship that they have. Um, and so it's okay, but it's also okay that I have my own reaction and my own feelings and experiences and I need to work through that. I do think it's okay for her to have internal workings that she's working on, but I want you to know you don't have to live that way forever. I do think that's a part of the healing process, but it's not a permanent and I don't think it should be permanent. I want to say it is okay to have those feelings, but just so you know, there's another side of it. Like I would argue that this – she's exactly on the journey, but like good news is like this isn't the end. Like jealousy, wanting people, like being like, oh my god, it's someone – I'm the last person single. All of that is something you can change because genuinely I think this is part of the healing. First you acknowledge the feelings are fine because you're feelings, but then you acknowledge like you don't have to have this relationship with them either. That perception change will absolutely radically change your life. And again, it's about being in charge of your train, taking over where the track is going, making sure you're the one driving it. Right now, it feels like she's in the the like the guest car of the train. It feels like someone else is driving her life and she's a visitor. And she keeps thinking like, I'll drive the train when the right person gets on the train. Like when the right other passenger gets on the train, I'll, I'll drive the train. You should drive the train. And then sometimes it sounds like she's outside of the train watching it go by her. Like your life is the train. Make sure you're driving it. You know? So I'm not upset that she's at this stage in her life, but I want her to know like this isn't where you're supposed to end. This is like the, still the journey. And the other place you're supposed to end up in is being happy for people's happy and seeing the positives to everyone getting married and recognizing that it has nothing to do with you. Your friends getting married shouldn't change your life. I've never felt like my friends getting into a relationship changed my life. I don't even know what it has to do with me. That's my confusion is like, what are you getting married? What does that have to do with me at all? That has nothing to do with me. My brother getting a, a wife had nothing to do with me. The only perk I got was like, now I have a new sister. Cool. And she gave me nieces and nephews. Amazing. But like it, it always benefits my life. That, ooh, that's the difference. When people in my life fall in love and it's real and it's healthy, I win because they win. And I gain, like they get happy. I'm happy. Everyone's happy. If it's a good relationship, it's like, how does this, how is this not a win? If it's an unhealthy relationship, oof, that's a whole journey. But if it's a healthy relationship and they're in love and it's real and it's good, then how is this not a win for everybody? So like, what does my relationship with my life have to do with anyone else in my life getting married? Like, it's not my business. Like, it's, you know what I mean? So like, I, maybe that's the disconnect. It's like, what does that have to do with me? that and I did and I feel like I'm in a better spot this morning but I just wanted to say to anybody out there who struggles or has struggled like I do it's okay that the holiday season is hard it's even harder this year because there's so much going on in the world that makes me not want to celebrate and that makes me angry and sad at the lack of humanity that we see all around us but um just know that if you're feeling alone, there are other people who understand what you're going through, even if you might not know that in the moment and you might not know them. That's what I mean when I say you're not alone. You're not alone in that experience. Others have experienced those things as well. Um, and that you can make it through those feelings of loneliness. Wishing everybody a happy and healthy 
time of year, even though there is so much turmoil and difficulty going on. I am so glad that you don't feel lonely. I truly that's I'm 68 and never lonely. I love my home full of animals, books, and movies and friends. Join groups or volunteer. Okay, let's see how she reacts. Yeah, I want you to know that I have a lot of those things in my life as well, and I still feel lonely. And so I don't think that there's anything wrong with loneliness. And me talking about it wasn't necessarily to like have people fix that loneliness component for me, but to share. This feels like a uh, cope. There's nothing wrong with this, but I'm going to get on the internet and talk about how sad it is. Why are you sad, girl? Did your dog die? Oh, no, you don't like dogs. So, no, it didn't die. Like, this part is the point is that the 68-year-old has a good relationship with her consciousness. Obviously, everyone who's happy and single alone is having a great relationship with themselves. That's the point. And I think everyone in healthy relationships is also having a much better relationship with themselves. Not a perfect one, but a better one share with others who might be in my same boat who no matter what they have in their life they still feel lonely and then the other no matter what they have in their life they still feel lonely no matter what they have in their life they still feel lonely she just categorized herself she's the category of person that no matter what she gets in life she'll only always feel lonely because she doesn't have a relationship with her consciousness. That's my assessment. I have diagnosed her with lack of relationship with consciousness. Philosophy Brittany coming in. Component is that there are things that no matter what I put into um, my life, they won't change the fact that I've never known love. They won't change the fact that I've never been in a romantic relationship and I've wanted that. So no matter how many times I volunteer, no matter what I do, no matter what groups I join, there is still a component that doesn't get filled by what I'm doing. And there's a component in me that I can't pass on to anyone or anything because that's such a specific relationship that it's there for. And so there's nothing wrong with struggling with a lack of romantic love and relationship and wanting it, seeking after it and not finding it, and then not having any other relationship fill that void because it's such a different relationship. So again, I'm just speaking for me here, um, just for me. And there's nothing wrong with what fills your life. And again, like I said, I'm glad that you don't feel lonely. However, I do. And it's okay that I express that and feel those things. And it's okay that I that I have wants and wishes and desires that haven't been. Do you guys see the difference between complaining and venting now? She's been complaining this whole time. She wants to vent, but she really wants to complain to meet other people in her position so they can complain together. Venting is about, I'm stressed, but I'm going to do it anyways. Complaining is, I want to complain about something that I'm not really fixing. People are trying to help. The 68-year-old's like, oh, but it's the way she's hearing the message as well. But romantic relationships have nothing to do with what she's struggling with. It has nothing to do with that. And the fact that she's still convinced it does at 41? Hayda says if she's never had a romantic relationship, how does she know it will fill her hole? Well, there's a joke in there somewhere, Hayda. Uh, she doesn't know that it will fill. And it won't. It won't fill the hole she needs filling which is the one that is the relationship with her consciousness. But she thinks it will. And that's what people are trying to tell her. Like, it's not going to fill your whole girl. Like, it is in your head because you've read, like, the romance novels, but it's actually not going to, you know? Been fulfilled. And honestly, there are certain things that won't fulfill it. Like, I literally cannot take the love that I have for a friend and put that in the slot that was reserved for romantic love. Like, it Yes. Absolutely. I agree with her in this. But the love you're going to have for a romantic partner also doesn't fill that void inside of you. It's the love you have with your consciousness. She hasn't accepted that she's either going to meet the love of her life or not. But if she can't meet the love of her life in this lifetime, she's got to let it go. And also, maybe she's not ready to meet them because she's not ready to let this part go. I bet if she let this go, she would meet them. But she's not going to let it go. If she could let this part of her life go, she'll have a better chance of meeting that person. Because again, she has to remember like she's asking someone to date her, being the person that thinks a romantic relationship is going to fix everything. Oh, sounds codependent -y. It doesn't do the job. And I've tried and I've been told that all I need to do is do that. It's like the wrong key and the wrong lock. Mm -mm. And so when I when I hear that, 
type of advice. Again, there's nothing wrong with you sharing that. And if it helps other people who maybe don't have those things, I'm grateful for that. But for me, it is literally like you're telling me, it's super, super easy. Just take this key, jam it in this lock, open and, and go in. And I'm sitting here saying like, the key doesn't even get in. It doesn't even enter because it's designed for something mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's just something that um, I wanted to share. And I know that others might relate to that, that honestly, sometimes no matter what you try to fill your life with, you will still feel lonely and there's nothing wrong with those feelings. And I think for me, I just process through them and work through them and just accept that sometimes I'm going to be lonely. And Sarah says it. she's dead set on being lonely in all ways, not just romantically. I agree. And that's probably because of her trauma, bros. It's very hard to realize that introspection is very difficult and philosophy has to coincide with your therapy. And she's stuck in the Mormon bubble as it is. But yeah, that's what it is. You know, I'm not saying she doesn't have valid feelings. I'm saying those feelings are actually like the solution in her head isn't the solution she thinks it is. Not that the feelings aren't valid, but like the solution she thinks is the solution is not the solution. Okay. You know, that's like not some dude is not going to fucking fix this girl. The power is in us, yo. You are so powerful and capable. It is in you. It just is, you know. I know Uncle Iroh had a son, but just a reminder, we never met that wife. So how do we know he even had one? Maybe he just got a girl pregnant and had baby mama. I'm just saying be like Uncle Iroh, bro. It's about the relationship you're having with yourself. Sometimes I'm going to be sad. That doesn't mean I am all the time. That doesn't mean that I hate being single all the time. It just means that there are moments that are harder than others. And in in sharing them, I just want others who might be feeling like me to feel less alone by knowing that they aren't alone in these feelings. Anyway. All right. I thought about this comment all during the Weighing in as a divorced woman who raised tw- who raised twins and did all the married and family stuff for 12 years, you're missing nothing. Please do not send hate to this person who commented. Validate and see their pain and reason why they comment- commented, send love. What, what not to say to single people, please? Well, everyone's trying to help and give tools, but obviously, like, they're not the right exact tools for her brain. So the question is, like, what's her brain need to understand it? Probably, like, therapy and philosophy, honestly the gym and i am so tired of this comment honestly i want to like give you these flowers and tell you that i'm sorry for whatever it is that you've gone through in your life due to relationships uh but those are actually for my mom she loves peony so i'm gonna give those to her but this is literally what not to say to single people And as a woman in her 40s, who actually is a woman in her 40s in Utah, who by the age of 25 was seen as obsolete because I didn't have a companion, I have heard this so many times in my life. And I'm just tired. It's not, it's just lazy because it's not true, honestly. Again, I think it says more about. It's not true. And yet you're the one who hasn't had the relationship, girl. So everyone who's been in a relationship is telling you it's not what you think it is. And you're like, you don't know better. Sis, you're the one who's not been in a relationship and we're telling you once you have that relationship, it's not going to be what you think it is. And when you find out it's not what you think it is, you're going to be fucking shattered again. Your bubble's going to pop and you're going to have to start all over again, but that's fine. Maybe that's the lesson she has to learn. About where you are in your life and your experiences than it does about mine. But it's just so dismissive of like real pain and real loneliness. And For sure. We don't want to just like disregard her pain, right? real difficulty that a lot of single people have to deal with let alone what we have to deal with because people who've been in relationships never want to validate our pain or see it as legitimate as human beings we're con- no we just know you're wrong conditioned to want love and to des- yes but not necessarily romantic love like that's the problem she's not getting no one's saying you don't want love We're saying you keep thinking romantic love is going to be the thing. Maybe it is. Do you think there? Okay, this is a big question. Is there a part of the population that's genetically or biologically designed to actually need romantic love? Because sometimes I do meet those people and they do confuse me. And a lot of them are like lonely. But even in relationships, they're needy as fuck. So that's my question. Okay, because I, um, fuck you. No, I'm right. You're wrong. I'm so sick of this because every time I entertain this idea and I do. I start to entertain it. The same people that are so 
fucking lonely and they their whole life is dictated on whether or not they have a relationship even after they get into those relationships they still make demands on the people around them it's still not enough I'm just I just refuse to believe I've never seen it I've never seen a person who said like romantic relationships is my whole thing get that relationship and still not feel empty and still not make demands on the people in their lives like I have seen the people like me though ironically enough who talk about how friends and families and jobs and like the relationship with your consciousness is enough. But also when I get into a relationship, I'm like definitely a relationship person. So like, I don't know, is there people? I've never met one. And I, you know how many thousands of people I've talked to. So I need to know, do any of you have this lived experience where genuinely it was true that the loneliness within yourself wasn't a relationship you were having with your consciousness, but the fact that you were missing a romantic relationship. I just have never met that person. You know? Whoa, Maiden says she's only three years older than me, but she looks way older because she doesn't engage in in childlike behavior because she doesn't engage with her child. The child within her, the one that she's afraid to be again, she doesn't engage with it. She doesn't have like Taylor Swift is as childish as she gets and barely like she doesn't have youth in her because she's afraid of being young, which is a part of her trauma. P.S. Her trauma is playing such a huge role in this, and I don't know how she doesn't understand that desire love and there's nothing wrong with wanting that and I've been shamed all of my life for feeling sadness about not having that in my life I've no she's so traumatized bro yeah she's so traumatized like she doesn't understand like no one's shaming you for wanting to be in love we're saying it's not what you think it is it's like we're trying she is like a stuck as a child it's like you're trying to explain to a kid like hey finding Edward Cullen isn't gonna fucking save your life bro like finding the love of your life is not going to actually change anything. And when you realize, because you don't meet people in my life are like, I found the love of my life in their relationships. It did not change. They were not fulfilled. They were still needy in ways that didn't make sense. Like, why the fuck are you still struggling with your consciousness? If you found like, because it was never about the love of your life. It was about the relationship you're having with your consciousness. And also, I don't think they found the love of their life, to be fair. I think they settled. Right. So I think people who settle like people like her are codependent and there's lots of trauma and it's exhausting honestly it's exhausting I've never had a relationship I've never had a boyfriend I've done first dates and tried really hard to date and that impacted my worth so much and it also impacted you know it probably impacted your worth your essay as a child bro which probably impacted your dating which probably impacted the way you dated she the one thing that could have changed your life is getting therapy for your essay when it happened but you can't take that back and that's usually not common anyways but obviously, like, yeah, her full, ugh, the Mormon church is fucking her up. I blame the Mormons. Impacted me because there were people who didn't understand that that's a legitimate pain. That's legitimate it is loss. Legit. It is. You want to know what I've missed? I've missed quite a lot. I've missed and will never have being young and in love. I have. Yes, Alex says my partner is a bonus person in my life. So glad he's mine and I'm his, but I'm still me without him. Exactly. I tell my husband this all the time. You are the love of my fucking life. I feel like I won the lottery. But if you think you dying is going to shatter my soul, girl, nah. And same, vice versa, okay? Same. My partner is this amazing cherry on top to a perfect life. And I'm so grateful I found the love of my life in my lifetime. But he will not decide if I'm going to be joyful after he dies, girl. Because you know he's going to die before me. Because my family, the women live forever. I tell him this all the time. You will, will He will die at 90. And I will die at 103. And I'm going to be living with my punk ass hair and my tattoos and my nudity until I'm 103. And I'm going to be like, you know what I mean? Mm-mm. Mm-mm, ma'am. No way, ma'am. I've missed being asked on a date in high school and experiencing what that feels like when you've never had that before and you're just navigating what that looks like. I've missed having somebody walk up to me and think that I'm attractive and desirable and ask me out. I've missed a uh, deep, pure friendship and love that comes as a result of romantic relationships. I've missed being um, seen and validated and and loved on a different level than a friendship. I've missed my father, who's now dead, walking me down the aisle or being there at my wedding or seeing me happy and loved and cared about. I've missed the opportunity to give love in such a deep and real- There are children dying in Gaza, Karen. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, for real though, I feel bad for her. This is trauma. This is self-loathing, self-pitying, woe is me trauma. 
She already said it. I'm not even talking for her. She already said it. Okay. She is literally like, my life is so bad. My father, this, 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 this. My girl, my parents even come to my wedding because I'm not Catholic. Get over it. It's not a big deal. People live differently than you. Plus, what if she didn't get Mormon married and her husband and her dad couldn't even walk her down the aisle because she didn't get Mormon married? You know what I mean? Like, this is this is what I mean. Like, trauma is trauma is trauma, girl. Okay. But like, it's okay for her to feel her feelings. I just feel like this should be happening in therapy. I feel like this is the middle space. She can either go back to being even more miserable or forward to being better. Okay real way. I've missed what it feels like to have a real first kiss, be something that is valued and, and beautiful. Fuck? No, and no, 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 no. Yo, people really live in a fantasy land. My first kiss when I was like nine years old, 12 years old, and my buddy next door kissed me really fast, August 6th, that happened at my best friend's backyard, and it was a peck on the lips. Move out. Get over it, sis. And then my girlfriend kissed me in high school, and I don't even think I kissed my high school boyfriend. And then I kissed again, I don't know, like once or twice, who cares? And then I really started making out for real when I was like 22. But like for real, for real, this whole thing, like my first kiss was supposed to be special, and I missed out on that. Oh my God, this is trauma. The stuntedness is so amazing. This is why you got to fucking take care of your kids and prioritize your kids. This is why you got to do your best to keep your kids away from predators. This is literally why you must prioritize your children because they will suffer into their 40s. Yo, she doesn't need a boyfriend. She's got her suffering. Yes, Hayda says she's in love with her suffering. Bro, bro. First kisses, being like, I have to put these things on a pedestal. Ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, somebody get this woman a sex worker so she can get over it and realize it's not that deep. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Okay. And be respected for who I am. And I'm not saying that that happens in every relationship. Of course, on the other side, I've missed a lot of pain that sometimes happens in relationships, but I've never been somebody who said, don't give me the pain. I don't want it. I've had pain in a lot of other ways in my life. Um, and so when you say that I've missed nothing, it's such a slap into the face of all the grief that I actually have experienced. And it's such a like minimizing of the desires that I have as a human being to love and to be loved. I've missed being a mother. The thing that I wanted more than anything in my life. And I would have been a very, very good mother. And I don't need people to tell me to adopt or all those other things. Just just telling you where I am. I feel like she would have been a bad mom. She's not a very good person to herself. I don't know how she would have been good to her kids. You know, I'm not convinced she would have been a good mom. Like, she's not even good to herself. She's very mean to herself. I couldn't be this mean to myself. Uh... And I, I really, I've bullied myself like Eminem told me to. And like, I've never even been this mean to myself. There are grief and losses that I am dealing with as a result of having missed a lot. And to have my pain invalidated and pain of many, many single people who know what I feel like is just not right. Just like it wouldn't be right if I invalidated the pain that... Paulina said, when is it too late to go to therapy for essay? Never. It's never too late. Death. Are you dead? No, never too late has happened in your life through divorce or through whatever might have come your way so know that i'm sending you love honestly i'm not kidding when i say these are for you i'm giving you these and I, and I don't have to tell my audience but obviously we're here to observe this person's life not to go after them and they really don't ever need to see this video but if you do like reach out girl i'll talk to you girl but obviously i just need i think you need to unpack all your trauma and unpack everything from your childhood and realize like none of these things are as deep as you think they are and the only reason they feel deep is because you're stunted in your childhood and you haven't had a chance to realize like only a 15 year old thinks these things are deep it's like she stopped aging but then can't be youthful. None of these things matter in adult world. They shouldn't, like even my friends who are suffering the most in relationships like this, I feel like they're so stunted in their youth. Where like they're still thinking about high school. The fact that she's still thinking about high school in her 40s, ma'am, red flag, ma'am. You need to like understand this is about you. Your husband isn't gonna help you fix your relationship with wanting to relive high school. I'm asking you to not say that to a single person in the future because it's painful. Thanks. Okay, I received this comment. 
my worst nightmare to young people. You guys don't write. Well, these comments are awful. I would never write these comments on people's posts for the record. I know I make content, but no one's going to find my content in the, unless they're looking for it. I would never go on her page and write a horrible message about what I think her problem is, which I think is totally different, you know, totally different. And so I think like this is the problem is like I would never like she has to understand like the people who are willing to write these things like I don't like that either. I'm so glad. Oh, my God. I'm so glad my audience is so good. If you watch Caleb Hammer's comment section, it's like hell on earth. If you see certain people's comment sections, it's like so poisonous and toxic. I'm just so glad my comment section isn't like that. But also, if you act like that, I will block you. To be fair, though. I haven't blocked Menifestel's comments yet because I want to do like a video on that. Go on my Menifestel videos and look at the comment section. Menifestel's audience is one of the most miserable groups of women I have ever witnessed in my life. They have been bullying me ruthless in my own comments and I'm just saving the comments to make a video on it later. It's so interesting. I don't take it personal. I understand like they have no idea who I am. But Menifestel's commenters are so mean. And I'm looking at them like, you're bitter women. And like the fact that they don't see that and they're comparing, they're comparing me, they're calling me a pick me. Well, they're literally centering their life around men. It's hard to see yourself when you're bitter and angry and miserable. But girl, ma'am, sis, absolutely not. Same with Think Before You Sleep. I've saved all his comments on my channel because I want to do a video about it later where I've left them up. It's so funny. They're so miserable, bro. Manifestel, girl who? You guys said who? Manifestel. She's a nice little Asian lady on the internet, but her whole life is centered around men and helping women navigate the man's world. And it's just sad and depressing. I have two videos about her. Just look at the comment sections of those videos. They're so sad. They're so depressing. And I'm, oh, I'm going to do a video essay on it. I swear. I've been working on like one in my head where I'm like, that's it. I got it. I got it. Not to attack Menifestel, but to point out the point. These are women who say they're for women. And all of them they did is bully me in my comments because they're mad that they censored their life around men. It's so interesting. I'm fascinated with their psychology, bro. Okay, anyways, thank you for being a great audience who doesn't bother people. Don't bother this woman. Leave her alone. So they wrote, my worst nightmare. That's a very mean thing. Don't write those on, don't, don't write that on people's comment sections. On a post of me talking about back in April, um, being 40, being single, having never been in a relationship. Now I deleted the comment and I blocked it all out. Now to be fair, they could be saying, oh my gosh, this is my nightmare. Like this is what I... Like, I feel you. But, like, to be fair, she is living people's nightmares. And to be fair, she thinks it's a nightmare. That's why she's talking about it. So they could be bonding with her, but I doubt it. Because the individual that commented that when I clicked on their profile is 17 years old. Aww. And I want to speak to 17-year-olds. I want oh. to speak to those younger than me. I am 41 years old. And I want to speak to somebody who would believe that somebody's reality that they're actually living is that person's worst nightmare. And I want to speak to that because I once was you. I once felt like that. Now, I don't want to shame you for saying that somebody's reality is your worst nightmare because, like I said, I can relate to that feeling of thinking if I made it till 40 and I've never been in a relationship, I wouldn't want to be alive. That's how drastic I thought it was because society condition us, conditions us to believe that we have value and our most value is placed on the romantic relationship that we have and how we're seen and viewed by other people. So I want to say to you how I wish I could go back in time and realize that my value was not dependent on any other human being. My value wasn't dependent on my relationship status or anything. As a human being, I just had intrinsic worth that I mattered. And I wish I could have understood that because then I think my ability to find value and worth in my life outside of that would have potentially led more people into my life because I, I struggled so much and I was so desperate for it that I think I focused on the wrong things. I also wish I could go back in time and tell myself to feel my feelings, that that's okay. It's okay to feel that deeply, um, but feel them, feel through them, and then look for what other feelings you could be having and know that you don't have to be comparing yourself to everybody else to f define who you are. I wish I could have told myself to relax, like relax, Mia, chill, <laughs> like build your life. 
uh, find your passions and the things that you love to do and understand that there will be moments of sadness, but that doesn't mean that you don't have a life worth living. And that doesn't mean that you can't build something with that. And then while you're building, potentially people can come into your life, not just romantic relationships, but friendships and, and real things that can bring you um, joy and satisfaction and goodness, notwithstanding the difficulty that will enter your life. And I hope that social media and TikTok and things like that are helping you understand that there are people out there who are just like you. Part of what hurts so much for me is I felt like I was the only one. I grew up in a small town. I was one of the only people who have never dated. And I saw myself as such a oddball, a pariah, something not worthy of loving when the opposite was true, that I was worthy of loving just as you are. And so I hope it's helped open up your mind to the idea that there are other people People that live like you and so if other people are out there experiencing it then you're not alone and that means that it's not you that caused your lack of romantic relationships because that's another thing that I felt quite a bit and just continue to try to live your life continue to feel Like, um, hmm, um, hmm, um, I don't think it's your, I don't think it, first, I don't think it's anyone's fault. I don't believe in fault and I don't believe in blame because it just ruins everything. So it's no one's fault. They're single. So I'm not going to blame you. Okay. Boom. I do think how you perceive the world and have a relationship with the world and your consciousness. I believe in karma, huh? Okay, let me say that. I believe in karma. Karma is that you do good, you get good. Karma is what you put into your life is reflected back to you. And this woman's karma is what it is. This woman has put into her life and she has received what she's put back into her life. Your life is a reflection of what you've put into it. Society is a reflection of what we've put into it as a collection, okay? So I don't believe in blaming or, or saying it's your fault. I'm saying your life is exactly the way you designed it to be, period, period. I feel your feelings. Know that you have intrinsic worth and value and Ooh. that it's going to be okay. Life will be hard and it's hard for all of us. And there are lots of other worst nightmares out there that are real things that people uh, should fear. But being single for an extended period of time isn't one of them. Why do Brooke says, what's the difference between holding someone accountable and fault? Um, when you hold someone accountable, I think it's really important to hold them accountable to society's values if they live inside of it, if it's reasonable or their own values. But I don't think you can hold people accountable to your own values. So I can't go to a vegan and say like, oh no, a vegan can't come to me and say like, I can't believe you're eating meat. I need to hold, I need to hold you to my values. But I can go to a vegan and say, hey, you're not like, you're not supposed to be eating meat. I'm going to hold you to your own values. Fault is more like the vegan comes up to you and says, it's your fault. I'm eating meat. Um, because you, you put it in front of me or it's, um, you know, in, it's no, they need to hold themselves to their account, like their, their values, their morals. Does that make sense? So, okay. The difference is like you set the tone of what you think is right. And then we hold you to the standard. Society is a little bit more difficult because you're living in a collective that you might not agree with, agree with everything, but you're there. But for the individual, okay. It's about you. So her values are confusing to me. I'm not sure how to hold herself to her own values. I think she's still learning what they are. You know what I mean? And so that's like up to her. It's why when men are like, oh, she tempted me. Um, You're the one with the value of not fucking the girl, bro. Not me. But at the same time, it's like being the other woman. If you think it's okay to break up a marriage, that's your morals and values. And I think that's shitty. But like that's your morals and values. Some people think that. Some people feel like being the other woman isn't immoral because they're not the one in a committed relationship. I think that's also bad, but some people don't believe that, but I can't hold them to my standard. I can only hold them to theirs, right? So it's something like that. So the man who cheats on his wife or the woman who cheats on her husband, well, like we're trying to hold you to your standard. We're not the one who cheated, something like that, you know?
How do I think I... Hi, uh, you might have addressed this many times, but genuinely curious, how do you think you've been single this long? Been single this long? Yes, I'm 41 years old and I'm single and I've never been in... I think she gets wet thinking about it. I'm so sorry. That was so crass. But I do. I think she's like, yes, I have been 41 and I am single. I think at this point, we've watched how many hours of her content? How long has it been? It feels like it's been 20 hours. I think she gets off a little bit, a little bit, a little bit doing the content. Something about the way she's talking about it sounds at this point like she's bragging a little bit. Just a little bit. I hate complainers. I really do. Because at some point, I think they just like the way their own voice sounds. That's why I don't like complainers. In a long-term relationship or had a boyfriend, nothing past first dates. Now, first, before I go into the reasons that I think for myself, I want to say this, that most relationships have a large component of luck. And I don't think that we acknowledge that, that enough. I think we think about it in terms of just like we do with weight loss. Like if I have enough willpower, if I dedicate, dedicate myself enough, if I do enough outreach, then results will come. But most of that, and I've learned that over years, I didn't always believe that. Uh, most of that in terms of relationships is luck. Now, there are three main reasons for my... I do think it is luck. I think it is luck that I ran into my partner and he ran into me. But I also think you do all the work necessary to be prepared to meet that luck. So what is that um, What is that saying, guys? Preparedness plus luck equals opportunity or opportunity plus being prepared plus luck equals... What is that saying? That's what it felt like. It felt like my partner and I both did the work separately to be people that when we met each other would be compatible for one another. So I feel like the luck is necessary to run into that person or those people first and foremost, but then you also have to be ready to meet that person. Because if you want a stable, healthy relationship, they're not gonna fall in love with somebody who's at this stage of their life, probably. It could happen, but probably not. Self that I think I have been single this long. First of all, Utah. <laughs> Utah. Utah is where I grew up, and I don't know Move. how to explain it to other people who haven't grown Move. up in this culture, but Utah, especially when it comes to dating, dating is a completely different animal unto itself. Obviously, part of that is influenced by the dominant religion in the culture, which is the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, more commonly known as Mormons. And in that culture, marriage is a huge thing. And um, it is that way. And you're taught young that you marry for time and all eternity, that you're not just married for here in this life, but for eternity. Um, but then an, a large component of that as well is that there's something called the law of chastity, which is not having sexual relations before you're married. And so that impacts the dating life because a lot of people People, um, they date for a short amount of time and then get married. Now, as a teenager in the late 90s, I grew up in a very small town. I was one of the only few people who were overweight in that small town in terms of like teenagers. Um, and then it's the early 2000s. Think about that time frame in terms of how we viewed people. Physical appearance, it's still a very important thing, but even more so, especially weight. Uh, but even more so in the Mormon faith. I feel like I've met a lot of fat Mormons in my life when I went to Utah. That was my lived experience. No. Yeah, Utah. Wait. Yeah. Where's Brigham University? Is that the Utah? What's the famous Utah? Or no, what's the famous Mormon University? I went there because a family friend needed to go see her sister who's Mormon. I saw a lot of fat Mormons. I saw a lot of non-fat Mormons too, to be fair. Um, But yeah, she needs to get out of that bubble. There's a lot of um, fat phobia. I, I would say. And there's a lot of the ideal person and what that ideal person looked like. A lot of the ideal person, the Mormon faith. There's a lot of um, fat phobia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I would say. And there's a lot of the ideal person and what that ideal person looked like. That ideal person was thin. That ideal person was blonde haired. And again, these are generalizations. I'm not talking about the outliers, but there are real generalizations that were taking place. You had to look a certain way mm -hmm. and men wanted a certain vibe from the person that they wanted to date. So dating was just super hard for me in that regard. Mm -hmm. And because that church component is so crucial, you don't start off dating to like get to know somebody and experience all the different realms of who they are. A lot of pressure is on dating so you can find a spouse, like it's dating to get married. And so it's very intense and people start off intense with what they're looking for. And if you're overweight in the early 2000s, you are not not the demographic that people are looking for and so no matter how many times I went to activities or tried really hard um, it 
I want to say this out loud, though I know this might come off offensive, so just keep it in mind. There is some correlation, not causation, correlation between, there's some overlap between childhood essay and binge eating and overweight people. Not that every overweight person has been essayed as a child. I don't want to imply that. But I wouldn't be surprised if she gained that weight um, through that experience, which she said she did, which led to her being rejected. The women I know in my support groups that I've met who have talked about this phenomenon say that they got bigger on purpose, thinking it would help people find them less attractive. But the dilemma with that, of course, is it comes with a lot of other burdens. And so I wonder if that was a part of her story. And I don't want to speak for her, of course. But I wonder if there's that correlation since she said she did binge eat after the essay and she felt like that was a part of her journey. And I wonder if, again, she's putting so much emphasis on dating and not enough on the essay. Like, I don't know if she's understanding, like, her childhood essay sounds like the root cause of all of these problems, uh, plus philosophy, plus her understanding of her own religion, that she keeps putting all the emphasis on like, I'm single, I'm single, I'm single. And I'm like, girl, you had a horrible thing happen to you when you were a kid. The last thing that's kind of the point right now is that you need to find a guy. Who cares about men? When girl, you need to heal that inner child of yours, you know? You gotta heal that inner child. Promiscuity is another side of childhood trauma. So many people who are essayed as a child or have childhood trauma also exhibit an insane amount of promiscuity or like they can't be alone. They can't be single. They constantly need to have somebody there. They need to be like, they just need a person there. So it feels like she's, you know, one side of that coin. And so I just wanna like, I wanna, you know, just send that message out to people. I really don't think centering your life around a partner is healthy. And I'm certainly learning more and more that that feels like the right answer, considering that her story is just all about being single and it's just not enough about the essay, you know? It just wasn't happening for me. So then there is that component that I think because I was overweight, it impacted how many people would want to date me. And then when I did go on first dates, a lot of those ended poorly because I was judged more on my outward appearance than who I was on the inside. And I think- that I think sometimes, and in a lot of circumstances, there is gonna be some correlation between how you present and how you are on the inside. Just in, in this sense, and I mean it in a trauma sense, not to discourage you, but to encourage you to be okay. Eugenia Cooney, the way she treats her body is an indication of a deep inner struggle, correct? And if she's having that deep inner struggle, sometimes when people view obesity in others or fatness in others, they're seeing a deep inner struggle, whether it's a problem with binge eating or alcoholism or something that's related to gaining weight or in Eugenia Cooney's case, losing lots of weight. So I think it would be sort of a red flag if somebody wanted to date Eugenia Cooney. I'm like, what do you, don't leave this girl alone. And maybe we should feel the same way, same way about like very big people. Maybe we should ask ourselves, like, why are you picking on somebody that's obviously traumatized? And at the same time, not every person, not every person, not every person. But I do think that it's, you know what I mean? Um, there's something about that where they want to be treated for who they are on the inside. But we've been listening to this girl for a long time now. And it's obviously there's something, we know what it is, but it's not just about her body. It's about that internal struggling struggle she's having, having with herself. That's the problem. That happens a lot more than we want to admit. I also was going through a lot with my mental health and had some difficult trauma experiences. And so a lot of components impacted my self-esteem and I wasn't very confident. Um, I was trying very hard, but I wasn't very confident. And so um, there's a million other reasons I can go into. This has already gone, kind of gone too long, but those are some of the main ones. Later, as I've grown in more confidence, I've still gone through some trauma. Um, and it just, I've stopped trying over the last three to four years. Well, five years, I would say, oh. because I am afraid and I'm mm. not sure that I have it in me anymore to continually, continuously try because I have for so long. So that's just a couple of the reasons. There's probably a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Why do I think I've been- True, Lily shout outs as Eugenia. 
apparently found God and is eating now. I did hear that she's on a better path. So, hey, sometimes it takes a little bit of God, you know? I'm single this long. Yes, I'm 41 years old and I'm single and I've never been in a long-term relationship or had a boyfriend, nothing past first date. Wait, didn't we just watch this? Oh, it's the end. Oh, we reached the end. We reached the end of the battle. We reached the end of her life. I'm just kidding. She's still alive. Okay, we did it. Let's go. She's doing good. She has 50,000 followers and like 4 million views. And people are really resonating with her story, which I think is good. So obviously, like I'm rooting for her to get better. But I think watching her life does sort of reassure me that my theory, which is anecdotal, is probably correct that centering relationships in your life, romantic relationships specifically, is probably not the way to go. I feel like you have to have a really good relationship with yourself. You know, yourself. I really wish her the best and I, I hope she finds what she's looking for. When I view people in this category though, it's never about being single. There is something there. And again, I have the same, I again, give me the grace to raise an eyebrow. Same thing I feel about people who are serial, like always in a relationship. It's like, do you never take a breather? If you're afraid to be alone, whether you've been chronically single or chronically dating, I think if you're afraid to be alone with yourself, that speaks volumes. And that's the answer. That is the answer. See how we give ourselves the answer, but we don't want to admit it? We know the answer. If you feel lonely when you're with yourself, if you feel like you don't want to be alone with yourself, that's the answer. That's your hill to climb. That's your burden to carry. That's your greatest challenge. How do I have such a good relationship with myself that not only do I not feel lonely when I'm alone, but when I am alone, I can recognize how to fill that void. Maybe, hey, I'm feeling like I miss girl time. Who should I call? Which one of my girlies should I call? Or, hey, I'm missing this time. Or, hey, I'm missing this. Being alone, like feeling uh, like uh, like not lonely in that deep despair way, but feeling like, hey, I'm alone right now and I don't want to be. That's great. Call a friend. Go out to a bar. Be surrounded by people. But that feeling of loneliness, like I can't even face myself. That's your answer, girl. You can't even face yourself. So learn to face yourself. They say on acid, I remember when I dropped acid with friends, they said not to look in the mirror. And I was like, why not? And apparently people on acid, when they look in the mirror, see their face in a way they've never seen it before. Kind of like when you use the TikTok app and you do the inverted camera and people are like, that's what I look like to people. All I do is stare at myself sometimes and I examine every part of my body. So when my friends and I did acid, we went into the mirror and we looked at ourselves and we're like, I don't see anything. Do you see anything? And they're like, no, I think you're supposed to see something you've never seen. I was like, nope, that's what I look like. And then with the inverted camera, I was using it yesterday with my husband. I was like, nah, I look the same, bro. I'm obviously not asymmet I'm not symmetrical, obviously, but I think I look the same. Some people hate how they look inverted. Like they cannot look at themselves. I just think I look fine. I look like a person. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> we're all gonna die and be warm food I don't fucking care okay this is the best it's gonna be and it's good enough you know the point is learn to look at yourself and learn to recognize it's just like a little vessel holding your consciousness it's not even that deep is this even that significant this thing this body you know in my head in real life while I'm dead my belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine yet all I do is whine not to you in my mind cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed so why's my life a mess please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking yeah I'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool